Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome. We're here for Classic Cast number uh, 23, I believe. Um, uh, counting's getting hard. These numbers are starting to get kind of high. I, uh, I lose track after 21, actually. But uh, welcome, guys. We're here with Yethesins, or Sakar, as his Twitch name is, Caden House, uh, on Twitter as well, former WoW community manager. Um, for those of you guys who don't know who uh, Yethesins is, who, who Sakar is, I, I got to get used to calling you by, by one name. Yeah, my, my phone name's dead now, <laughs> technically. Yeah. That means a banned account. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, but yeah, basically he uh, uh, there's some YouTube videos. He's been on my stream. He's been streaming recently. Uh, Sakar was a part of the uh, uh, 800 or so employees who who were recently laid off by Blizzard, and uh, he was a big part of the the classic community, the WoW community in general. Obviously, as a community manager, but specifically to the classic community, I know he he was a um, uh, I would say our line of communication uh, as far as community goes to to Blizzard and. Uh, you know, obviously something that a lot of people are really upset to see happen. Uh, of course, I'm also here with Stay Safe TV, Tips Out Baby, uh, my co-hosts, uh, and this is going to be a very good episode. I'm very excited. So, yeah. Actually, let's let's talk a little bit about how uh, how we met for the, yeah. the, the first, because the first time we met is actually kind of funny. Um, so those of you guys who don't know the story, many of you do, I'm sure. Uh, I, I used to stream Vanilla Wild private servers. Uh, do videos and stuff as did stay safe That's and undocumented servers uh, un undocumented yeah, <laughs> yeah undocumented <laughs> and basically what happened was uh i ended up getting uh i ended up getting striked i i got a i got a dmca i got a copyright ban after the classic announcement and it was myself and a few other guys stay safe was lucky he dodged the bullet but uh <laughs> but Basically, we we were like in a group of people, and we were like, okay, like what do we do? And then I said to stay safe and a couple others, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna try and ask around and see if I can get in touch with anybody from Blizzard, and see, you know, what are the rules? Like, what can I do? What can I not do? See what we can do as far as content, right? Right. So yeah. like, uh, I I tried to Discord DM a few people, email this and that. The one person who actually got back to me was. Sakar, it was Yithsons. And uh, we ended up having a conversation that night and kind of like, hey, like, you know, this is, you know, we don't think you're a bad guy or anything like that, obviously. Like, it's just the way things go and, and it's like the legal side of stuff. And he actually recommended to me to email somebody else to kind of like talk about it a little bit more, like what kind of content we can make. Uh, and eventually that led to, you know, and I basically said, look, I don't want to do anything. I, I want to put my channel in the best position that I, I, I can possibly put it in for classic. I don't want to do anything to, you know, ruin my relationship with Blizzard. I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I just kind of want to do my own thing and uh, just do things the right way to continue growing my channel and to keep doing the content that I want to do, um, especially when our classic comes out. And that's the same way Stay Safe feels. That's the same way Tips feels. And uh, when it came down to it, it was, hey, like you can't, you can't do private server footage. Uh, that's basically what it is. Like you can't you can't do private server stuff on on video. You can't you can't video that just because of DMCA stuff. So I was like, okay, we're gonna have to figure out a way to continue doing what we want to do and to continue to grow our channels uh, the right way. So that's kind of the uh, early part of like how Classicast has started. And actually, we had talked about the podcast, but that's that's the only thing we talked about that a few weeks ago. But um, yeah, so that's kind of it. I mean, if it wasn't for Ethan's kind of. Uh, at least responding, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, out of, out of all the people that I messaged, like, who knows, like, uh, what could have happened? So well, that, yeah, was, that mean, was really, really big. Sort of like the guidelines he gave us probably saved you from getting more DMCAs, and I've never got yeah. one. Saved me from getting my first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like, for sure. So that that was, like, a, a really big deal. So, yeah, if it wasn't for, uh, if it wasn't for that, like, who knows, who knows where we'd be right now. But um, I still feel bad about it. I still, I still feel <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. No, like we know, like it wasn't, it wasn't like something personal or anything. But yeah, that's that's kind of how we got to know Sakara. That's how we got to know Caden. And um, yeah, to to be here now, everything like since the classic announcement, and uh, just seeing everything that like you have put into the community, like it, it's been a it's been a big part of. Uh, oh yeah, uh, it's been a big part of the development of classic for sure. I mean, so like, I have a question for you, real quick. So you were sort of like, from my point of view, at least, I think a lot of people's point of view. You were like the go-to classic CM. You were mm -hmm. talking to uh, talking the most about classic. Um, is that something that you wanted to do, or was that work delegated to you, or how did how did that happen? Uh, so interesting enough, there isn't any specific community managers that are assigned to classic. It's just okay. Uh, I was the person who wanted to kind of charge into it and do it because I was probably 
out of all of us, I think I was the most excited about about the project. So I wanted to actually just I wanted to do it just because I wanted to do it, and I kind of generally go. was enthusiastic about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And it at least it kind of felt more genuine whenever I wanted to talk about it. And would, I knew kind of what topics I wanted to engage about it, or at least touch on when I could. Um, versus no you know say the, the retail game, even though I can talk about the retail game to a high degree, and I still love it. Uh, I just I also wanted to to basically be a part of the classic uh, classic community as well because I, I I was one of these players that wanted it for that wanted it for years. Uh, mm -hmm. I funny enough I actually didn't want it for the longest time until uh, I think seeing the seeing the passion that actually you guys were still putting into this this game that actually doesn't isn't officially supported and that's actually kind of right. what changed my perspective on it and being like no okay I want this now. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I just kind of ran it the second I had the opportunity to start talking about it. I just ran into it because I was like, I, yeah. I want to, I want to do this. Did you play back in vanilla? Uh, do you have any fond memories of it? Uh, I did. And I do. Uh, my roommate uh, who came with me out to California as well. But we're both from the uh, we're both like middle school best friends still have um. still friends to this day. And we met because of World of Warcraft. Uh, he actually got me to start playing the game. Uh, and he was a, I believe he was a like level 40 hunter when I started and I made a level one gnome rogue and I saw his pet and I thought he was a god and he like ran me through <laughs> dead mine and stuff and like helped me, helped me like get going. And I was like, how do you, how do you get so good at this game? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> and, uh, it turns out it was, it's just another like 20 levels. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so 20 levels and it doesn't matter but like i didn't get to do any content in vanilla other than playing with other people which was the content like i didn't get into my first raid until burning crusade and the second i got in mm -hmm. there i was like oh this is amazing mm -hmm. yeah 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 burning crusade i think we've talked about it before like uh we're, we're all big fans of burning crusade as well so like it's uh that's something we're hoping to see if classic does well we're hoping to see that from blizzard too um how have the past few weeks been for you, really, since the, uh, uh, I guess, since everything went down? Uh, confusing and uh, a, little, <laughs> a little strange. The easiest yeah. way to say is just confusing because uh, it's the worst moment, but it's also, like, kind of, like, the, the sweetest at the same time because mm -hmm. I didn't expect any sort of response. I kind of thought I would be, like, another one of the CMs that just kind of fade into the, fade into the black, that no longer associated with WoW kind of right kind of isn't isn't really like i guess relevant within world of warcraft anymore uh, right which that's all i ever do is play wow anyway so even though i don't even work at the company anymore i still fucking play this game I'm right, st right i'm still playing it uh it's been strange like i didn't expect the the response that i got to the tweets i made or even with the whole streaming thing i mm -hmm. I, I remember i was i think the day after i was having like one of the worst mornings ever it was the first morning i woke up no longer being a part of the company right and uh I got messages from all of you guys, all three of you. Um, and mm. uh, S-Fan, you, like, I was even bad in bed and I didn't want to get up. And I didn't want to, like, move. Uh, and S-Fan, like, encouraged me to, like, just get on Discord and just talk with them. And so me and you sat in Discord and just, like, chatted for, like, an, two hours, I think is what it mm -hmm. was. And you were like, you should, you should just, you should just stream. Like, he's like, just take it as, like, a therapy thing. Just kind of hang out and chat. Like, people would love it. And I just started doing that. And it was incredibly therapeutic uh, and i've somehow grown to love this weird little thing that i that i've been doing every, almost every day since <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nice yeah. isn't it? it it like it changes your opinion on gaming like before i started streaming i could not play single player games on my own but now i feel like playing single player games on stream is almost as fun if not funner than multiplayer games sometimes yeah it's, yeah it's, it's really strange especially playing something like wow because a lot of times when i'm doing stuff people are asking me questions because a lot of people get to ask, I guess, a Blizzard, former Blizzard employee, you know, how uh, the philosophy is or what do you think about how this is done or oh, what's the actual story kind of behind it. Uh, so that's been kind of that's been kind of fun to kind of, to kind of, I guess, peel the curtain back a little bit. To yeah. Let everyone know more about how the sausage is made, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully we'll, we'll peel the curtain back a little bit more today, too. Um, whenever whenever Classic was. Actually, first off, before we do anything, you're you're still under NDA, right? Yep, still. Uh, that's pretty much the way like an NDA works is it's in per. So it, 
it's just yeah it's yeah like, there's just certain there's just certain things like you you can't talk about because nda and and all that yeah uh, which is I fine pre- right pretty much can't talk about anything that isn't publicly known so once you guys know right. about it then i can talk about it but right that's really about it you should just tell us everything that you can't talk about so we know not to ask about it <laughs> yeah okay let's get this list right here let's just start going down it <laughs> yeah yeah so uh Let's let's go ahead and get into it. Whenever when did you first find out about Classic? Like Classic was announced two years ago now, right? It was it was at BlizzCon 2017. Okay, I got my years right. It was announced. I know we've all talked about it. None of us expected it. Stay safe. Thought it was a joke. I I was playing Madden in my living room. Like t- t- Tips was freaking out. I, like I mean, it was just it was a whole thing, right? Um, when did you actually find out? When did you first find out about Classic being a thing? Like this was actually going to be something that's real? I found out about seven months before you guys did. Ooh. Seven months? Yeah, I found out about seven months before you guys did. And when they told us, I also had the same response of, Haha, that's, that's a good joke. That's really funny. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. And, yeah. Uh, and then they finally told us and they were like, no, no, this is a real thing. And it was it was so funny because it had a... For everyone who was related to WoW, it had this weird effect. Like once it was finally like determined, we're doing this thing. This is this is a real project. This is really gonna yeah. happen. Uh, we're making this happen. And they what's when they announced it to the team officially. And when we got back to the office, because this was at like a, a an, uh, an offsite like all hands thing was when this was announced to us. Mm-hmm. When we got back to uh, the office, like it was me and the rest of the community, the, like the NA community team, we were all sitting there, speechless kind of didn't know what to do the rest of the day because we were like we're actually gonna do this yeah yeah this is real do you know how long they had been working on it prior to telling you from what i put together and i could be wrong uh they've been working on it for about a year or so at that point there was like a couple dude so this that's insane That's like basically right after Nos shut down, like a month or two later. Yeah. They're like, let's, yeah. let's do from it. From my understanding, I could be totally wrong. This is actually just me like, making a guess from what I've pieced together. It sounded like they had been working on it for about a year before, at least the team that was kind of putting this together to see if it was possible. They've been working mm-hmm. on it for about a year before we were even told that this was a real project and we were doing this. Uh, That's right. So sick, honestly. So, wow. Seven yeah. months prior to the announcement. Mm-hmm. That would have been right before I started streaming, which would have been right around Elysium launch. That's whenever you found out. I think if so, it was yeah. a if it was about a year before that, Nos had shut down around that time. Yep. So yeah, that's right. And then they had they had Nano and the Nost crew go to Blizzard. So yeah, a with few that means, months after that. So prior to having the Nostalgia team out, they were already working on Classic WoW. Is what that means. Yeah, that's what that means. <laughs> I, I, I think yeah. I think so. I think it was like a it was like a little passion project. I'm not sure at all. Yeah, uh, at like timeline. it just so yeah. happens to be that they were working on it on the side, and then they came out, and then like the whole thing kind of like panned out that way. And I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. there's probably people from the classic team watching. If I'm getting the dates wrong, I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> right, just, right. I, I could be I could be I could be totally wrong. This is me yeah. kind of making guesses yeah. and, and putting things together at least. Uh, yeah. it's still cool like i mean regardless of when it happened i mean even seven months before the announcement like i think uh, a lot of us had thought that they'd been working or they started working on it very like recently like very close to the announcement but um i want to ask you kaden what was the the general like office reaction to uh, it shock. when they told you shock when, when it was like happening yeah because yeah, we were like oh this is real this is actually yeah. this is actually real, and then we immediately start talking about what does this mean for World of Warcraft? Not as just not as would mean for the live game. What does this mean for like World of Warcraft as a franchise? Like this is this is huge because when WoW originally launched, you didn't have things like YouTube, Twitch. Like you, you ne- right. this world of content creation didn't exist when WoW originally launched, and so it was like we finally get to see what that looks like. And are the, right. it was kind of like all the all of our brains in the room were just like firing off of all these ideas of kind of like this is going to be incredible. Like, you know, we've all of these things existed partly kind of because of the content creation that spun out of the original game of players trying to figure out how do you even do this. Like things right. like cinema exist because of games like World of Warcraft, and yeah. so it's interesting to think of like art forms exist because of this game, and the original like or at least the ways that we do it now had to have no in no realm existed back then like 
like video capture was a very difficult thing to do. And now it's it, something that the computers you buy at Best Buy on a budget can do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like, not just that, but like software wise too. Like I remember, <laughs> I remember if, if you had like a full copy of Fraps, that was a very rare thing. Every video you saw was www.fraps.com yeah, at the top. Like, yeah. You had like the free trial or whatever. Yeah. People making and, PvP uh, montages with the Fraps like advertisement at the top. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. Now it's like everybody uses OBS and it's like it's free, you know, um, which came out with a new version today. I'm, I'm going to need to upload that or update that actually. Um, so basically you, you found out about this about seven. How do you think about how crazy it is that it was it was official seven months before the announcement and there was no leaks or nothing like nobody said a word <laughs> you know That's for something insane. that big <laughs> it's, yeah. it's actually yeah. totally crazy to think about that um so your your direct involvement with classic you you know your community manager um your and we, we had talked about this before right it's like a lot of times people perceive it, it's a huge misconception whenever they talk about like developers right they say it's developers and a lot of times they're talking about like programmers and stuff. But as far as people who contribute to the development of the game, it's not always the people who are only like writing the code out. Like a big part of what you did is you took a lot of feedback and, and whatnot from us. This is what we know. But but will you go ahead and explain like what your involvement was with like the development of Classic? Yeah, so most, to be honest, most of my involvement with like the classic project was me wanting to just be in the room and just kind of talk <laughs> to those guys. So I'd find any excuse to go talk to them. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I hope they see this. I hope they see this clip. And uh, I, I, Brian and everyone, I, I miss you guys. Um, I, I looked for any excuse to walk over into their area and just chat with them. <laughs> and uh, I think Brian once or twice kind of like kind of try to get me to like shoot me right. He's like, it's great. It's great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm like, and they're wanting to talk about the whole yeah. thing uh, constantly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, hey, they're on the forums talking about loot trading again. They're like, yeah, we know, we know, Kaden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind, yeah. Kind, of, kind, of a, kind of a little of that. It, it, funny <laughs> enough, it's, I actually didn't know where they sat for the longest time, and I talked to them for a little bit uh, uh -huh. through like you know just like through messages through like our chat programs and emails. Uh, and then when I finally figured out where their area was, I went over there as much as I could. What yeah. about what about stuff like the dev water coolers? Did you help put those together? Or I guess another question in addition to that, what goes into making those and distributing those? So dev water coolers, they are incredibly annoying uh, from everything. Really? I wasn't involved with the classic one, uh, but from what I've been told, the the classic one, it was uh, a want by a couple of a couple of higher ups. And so they actually had written uh, had written everything down. And then it basically goes back and forth between a bunch of people. So say the first person wrote it down, sends it to the classic team, the classic team approves it. Then it goes to the next person, the next the next like high up, reads it, pull with it, makes some edits, changes based on like what they want you guys to know yet, what they don't want you guys to know yet, that kind of thing. And then it just keeps going back and forth through constant iterations. And that happens for, uh, for like a month sometimes. Oh, wow. And then... Eventually, it works its way down finally into a blog post, and then it com comes down to us. It it takes a while. Damn, wow. that's crazy. Do you think? Um, I guess before I ask you that, like, if you were to be able to to write your own blog post, right, your own dev water cooler update, what's the topic that you would want to see talked about the most when it comes to classic? Talked about the most. Uh, I'd want honestly just talking about some of the some of the basically the rebuilding and reverse engineering of some of the mm. stuff that they have to do because i think that's the most i think it's the most interesting thing from my perspective of hearing what all they're working on and how they're accomplishing these crazy things like you know the fact that you get something like uh, elevators working again and say the thunder bluff mm -hmm. how do you how do you how do you redo that how do you get boats to work again because remember boats didn't work very well back in the day how do you how do you how do you choose to either replicate that old behavior or try to make them more robust and actually function? Like right. those those conversations are really fascinating, and I could sit in their area and listen to them talk about it constantly. Yeah, like, to talk about little things like that of how do you get these things to function like they did back in the day? Mm -hmm. How how do we exactly do you engineer this? It's funny that you mentioned boats. I remember there specifically being a uh, I remember seeing a video about it years ago. There was stuff you could do, like how, how the boats were scripted, how they were coded, was you could change something client-side to actually change where the boat takes you. 
back in the day and like people would use that and they would they would like download another like mpq file or something and they would actually go to gm island on like the boat to darnassus or something i, I don't remember what boat it was specifically but they would do like crazy stuff like that and then they get banned but <laughs> like <laughs> but i mean that, I, I remember like boat specifically like now that you mention it there was uh some funny functionality with that yeah mm -hmm. let's make sure that behavior is replicated for classic you know, <laughs> yeah. very important <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, you know, kind of talking about the same thing here uh, or like on, on the same track, you were, as far as the community goes, a um, you were like our go to guy. Right. You were like the go to CM. Uh, were there any was that like something that you wanted to or was that a position that you wanted to be in maybe as like the classic community manager or uh, was there anything that was like you, you thought might be on the table there or what, what was your kind of plans there? Uh, I mean, it kind of—it was something that kind of happened naturally, where it seemed like I was probably going to be the one that handled it, uh, mm -hmm. just because I was the—I was the, like I was saying earlier, I was the most enthusiastic about it, uh, and it kind of just happened. It just kind of seemed like it was going to be that thing where I was going to be in charge of it. Right. Okay. Do and then, um... well, yeah, once it started happening, I was like, "All right, sweet. I guess this is—I guess this is me now. I guess I'm doing this." Do yeah. You... Yeah. Do you think that Classico is going to need a dedicated CM or like, are they going to have their own set of GMs that deal with, you know, classic WoW problems? What do you think they're going to do as far as like customer support and customer service stuff? Uh, they won't, I don't think they'll need a specific classic CM. Uh, just judging off of the stuff that I was doing uh, with you guys and just kind of mainly the, the majority of what I was doing was just making sure that you guys knew that we were, we were still alive and we were kind of acknowledging you. Yeah. Uh, right. But like we'll say once classic gets here, like there's honestly, isn't really a need for a classic CM, just kind of the regular ones can, can do both. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty mm -hmm. easy to do, to handle both of them at the same time. Um, right. But for, uh, sorry, what was the other part of your question? For GM, for any sort oh, yeah, of like customer GM. service stuff. Yeah. So from my understanding that isn't figured out yet specifically to have something concrete down, but I imagine like it'll, it'll probably be handled like regular Game Masters will. Um, it's Game Masters actually don't work on specific titles. They work on all of the games at the same time. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's no like specific role Game Masters that are like, oh, I only work on this game. Like they actually work on everything. So okay, uh, okay. it'll be another, it'll be another like tool in their belt. That they'll, you know, they'll have to learn some little things in here and there. Most of the Game Masters actually played vanilla. So at least the ones that I, at least the ones that I know of, like they actually mm -hmm. played vanilla. So it'll be pretty, a pretty easy pickup for them. <clears throat> Right. Um, so you know, you're talking about like basically you making sure that we know that you're still alive, right? That was a big mm -hmm. thing because a lot of times, like we, um, there's times where, and I think we we've talked about this before. We feel like we're we're in the dark, right? Like it's like, oh, you don't know, like okay, what, what's going on with classic? Especially there, there was a long period of time uh, after the announcement up until the first water cooler update, and then there was another water cooler update right before uh, BlizzCon. Seven and a half what? months, then like three months, then yeah, it was, it was like something that. like that. Is yeah. there what? What is all? What all is the process of going into a water cooler update? Is it something? Because I know for me, and uh, I don't know, stay safe tips. You guys might be in the same boat. Like it's just like oh, okay, well, it's like writing a blog post, right? Like can't they just do this? Can you can you go into the process of actually putting out like a like a true like a good water cooler update and uh kind of being in depth about it too, as opposed to just like a forum post or something like that. Like, Hey, we're still alive. Uh, so like for say something like a water cooler thing, uh, forum post is actually super easy. It's just, I needed right. to find something I could talk about at least for at, at that, in that point in time, uh, which is sometimes the hard part is, is finding something you can actually talk about. Uh, cause right. a lot of it, it's, it's decisions we haven't even answered yet. Like we don't know what the, we don't know what we want to do about this yet. Um, but say for example, like a water cooler, it can come from either the dev team wanting to do one. Uh, they'll have like an idea, which the the, you know, the classic team has like a ton of ideas that they want to do. Uh, it's just, it's we got to figure out the timing for it and the strategy behind communication, that kind of thing. Like we're so far mm -hmm. out still that it's kind of, it's kind of a little weird uh, of how do you, how do right. you handle this while you're doing all of the the existing communication based on like say retail. You have to uh -huh. figure out how do you do all these things at the same time um is and, the team i'm sorry oh yeah no go ahead well i'm just saying is the team kind of um because obviously there is retail and and like you know we've often speculated that the team kind of you know you don't want to cannibalize the hype of a certain product over another product were you guys scheduling like posts out based on like 
what was going to be scheduled for retail. For example, you knew retail was going to have some kind of communication this month, then maybe we'll schedule something next month or next week for classic, something like that. Does, does that kind of, does it work that way? That typically would happen, but it, it wasn't really happening so much with, with classic because there just wasn't, it wasn't enough that we were ready to talk about just yet. Because keep in mind, a lot of a lot of the work that is being done on Classic is a lot of like super and it's like super back end stuff of trying to recreate a lot of the old functionality of things. Uh, so it's not there's not a lot of like it's not a lot of like really really cool kind of content at least for the average player to get kind of invested. But the hardcore player mm -hmm. is gonna love it. Uh, right. and it's kind of it's kind of figuring out when's the right timing to do those kinds of things. Right. Uh, which sometimes is not as not as easy of an answer as you sometimes think it would be, uh, but uh, that's kind of where we were at with a lot of them. But with say like a Dev Water Cooler, for example, the um, the the spell tech one uh, that I believe that was actually a want from the dev team, and so the dev team actually put that together, and then it worked its way down to community to the post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta say, I think people are way more interested in that nitty gritty in the trenches back and stuff than maybe maybe you guys realize. I think people oh, are thirsty agree. for that. I mean, we, we, uh, see, we see the success of John Stat's book about developing Vanilla WoW yeah. back in the day and how, how, how nitty gritty that was. I think people love that stuff. <laughs> I, oh, I, would love, I would love after Class WoW is out to hear a comprehensive story of everything they had to go through to make it um, a thing. I would love that. It'd be a cool like little like YouTube video or like a little oh, yeah. series or something on yeah. some of the kind of, kind of the processes they went through because it was always interesting hearing uh, how they were trying to accomplish some of the things like say for example uh how they were managing to get uh say the old maps to work because nowadays retail there's a map for all the dungeons but classic doesn't have that you have to get right. you have to get the zones to actually call the maps from the zones not the dungeon uh, right and there was no sort of like m like map whatsoever for dungeons and like how do you how do you get the the current clients to behave that behave that way yeah, right. that's, that's so crazy. Like everything is so like, it seems like it's your manual process. Like yeah. when they told us originally they were going to do the 735 client, I kind of assumed just like common sense, you would assume that everything would be kind of more automated and, you know, just yeah, flip a switch and, you know, set a couple settings and it'll port all the 112 stuff <laughs> in there. Um, yeah, I mean, you like, saw with the demo, there was a lot of stuff in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. Say like the looking for group tool, that's not supposed to be right. in classic. And it was like, we have it. We, sorry, we hadn't, we hadn't got the time to pull that out yet. It's oh, not going to be there. I, yeah, I S -Man had a heart attack. I was like, dude. it's not going to be there in the end. It's not going to be there at the end. Uh, well, the so dude, I, because I saw videos, <laughs> I, I saw the videos. And I, so whenever I, I was streaming at BlizzCon, the client that was on the floor at BlizzCon was different than the client that was pushed out publicly mm -hmm. and the client that was on the floor at blizzcon That's didn't true. have the slash lfg command so yeah. people were spent <gasps> like having like a heart attack like freaking out about it and i'm like what and so I, I went i checked and i was like no <laughs> like what are you guys talking yeah, about like i yeah. i think that anyone reasonable probably assumed it was just a small oversight and an easy fix but people really went crazy yeah. about <laughs> that and a lot of people don't realize this but like say the builds that say blizzcon they're they're using a different build than what you actually play at home. So even right. though some of you, mm -hmm. some people at home were playing together on the classic servers, the show build at the floor actually was a different build. So people who were right. playing through different updates. So at that point, like the looking for group thing was already taken out of that build. So like people didn't see it, but say S fans right. saw the video and was like freaking the hell out. And I'm like, Man, it's, not there. <laughs> it's not, I promise you it's not going to be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I definitely, we, we definitely talked a lot about uh, at BlizzCon about, uh, uh, about a lot of stuff <laughs> like after the classic announcement those yeah. of you guys who saw classic cast after uh after blizzcon i know i i came in and i was pretty hot like just because i uh and i know it was a lot of stuff that's like okay this is tentative this is something we're thinking about and we can get into that a little bit more uh here here in a little bit but uh just kind of going on the same track you know you, you said that we're a long ways out right we're a long ways out from classic but I think at this point, at this point in time, last year, we had gotten a BFA Alpha, I believe, by February, and BFA ended up coming out in August. Now, it got pulled up because it was originally September, uh, and then it ended up being in the middle of August. That's kind of when we foresee, uh, I think a lot of people foresee it coming out like somewhere between like July and September, uh, if it comes out at about the same time as BFA did. Um, do you think do you think it would be 
I guess, safe to to hope for a beta here in the next like month or so, maybe a couple of months, if that's something they would want to do. So full disclaimer on my answer here, because it's definitely something I don't know about. Uh, oh, okay. This is something I only heard like very early conversations on and no, I have no idea what they're actually going to do, but uh -huh. it would be reasonable to expect a beta just to kind of make sure that, you know, the game is actually functioning how it's supposed to and yeah. so things are being things are correct. It's very reasonable right. to expect one. Uh, and I honestly am. Uh, I don't know if one's going to happen at all, but I would expect mm -hmm. to probably see a beta. But I, I want to say they're probably going to think about it. Uh, probably of doing one for maybe like two weeks, three weeks, somewhere in there, because oh, sure. at least with something like classic, uh, people are going to go in and zerg the hell out of it and no life it. And they're going to play all the content already. Like you, that's not, you don't want that. You don't want that to happen. Yeah. I would assume they're either going to branch it out into little chunks. Uh, like stress like, test almost. Yeah. Like a stress test of certain level bands. Um, okay. Or they're going to just have the whole thing open for maybe like a very limited amount of time just to get, a lot of reports to make sure that hey is all this function correctly compare it to reference client whatever and work it work your way through that uh mm -hmm. and make sure things are actually working well um i, I wouldn't expect a full like uh, expansion level beta test or a kind of expansion level alpha test i would expect more of like a limited time frame to be like go into those, these areas go 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 like specific kind of stressed to make sure that the old escort quests are working correctly. Um, some of the old scripting for quests is actually functioning like it should, because some of that probably is going to break. Let's be real here. It's, it's yeah. old being redone. Yeah. Maybe, maybe this is a dumb question. Do they, do they have anyone internally that they can, you know, it's like a group of people say, hey, level one to 60, 10 times and, you know, report any broken quests. Do they have anyone, are, do, they, do they do that internally? Do you know? Yeah, that happens. The stuff like that happens internally. That's like normal QA okay. work. Along okay. with, uh, mm -hmm. they do these things called play tests where they want, they try to get people associated with WoW to kind of take some time to go through and play those, these zones and to test some of it out and be like, oh, this is where we're at so far. Uh, right. and then the team who, and it's usually comprised of people who definitely played it back then that can kind of weigh in on, you know, mm -hmm. what, what it, what it kind of feels like. Mm -hmm. Do they that's, take that's volunteers? A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I, said. Well, I couldn't figure out how to volunteer for it. Otherwise I would have done it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think uh, something that I've talked about before is I I would like to see a longer beta just because I think there's so much stuff to actually test. Uh, what my concern is, is that if Blizzard goes in and they look at Classic, it's like, okay, we want to do this, finished, boom, send it out, and just kind of leave it there. Now, obviously, that's an ideal situation, right? To be able to do something, finish it, and send it out and not to worry about it. But I think... Obviously, private servers are different. I, I, I totally understand that. But uh, I think just looking at what private servers have done is they go and they release something and then they, they release like a new fresh server, you know, after the lifespan of, of uh, life cycle of the server. And there's always some differences, right? They say like, okay, well, we noticed that whenever we put, we implemented this thing in the game a certain way, this was actually bad for the health of the server. So we're going to adjust this here. Like we're going to put the PVP gear in instead of like the, you know, instead of like around Nax time, 1.10, we pull it back earlier, right? Right before Nax, they put it in earlier. Um, and then, or 1.11 rather. Uh, actually, I'm confused. Was it 110 or 111? I'm, I'm blanking here. But it regardless, it's a, yeah, it was 111, wasn't it? Okay. So <clears throat> they, um, they, they end up putting in an earlier, like around AQ patch, for example, like that, those are the kind of changes, uh, that they would make as those kind of like adjustments to kind of make it work better in like the flow of the game. And now private server, retail vanilla, and wow, classic meta are all going to be completely different. Not completely, but, but I would say there's significant differences between all the metas and, uh, what my point is, is that I think that if the beta was longer, there would be more stuff to test and that they could do what would be an ideal situation for them. If they put out the game and there's things that are like, oh, this is wrong or this is wrong. If they decide to release fresh servers, which is something that I think we should do or that I think should be done, that we should get. Um, Blizzard should be willing to constantly look at like, OK, this needs to be changed for classic or whatnot. Right. Like we need to we need to adjust this here and there like very much like how private servers have done it. Like, you know, let's say the four phases thing. Like, I, you know, I've talked everybody's heads off about four phases of content release. Let's say they, they come out with four 
and they're like, you know what, that was a bad idea, we need to make it six. Or let's say they come out with five or six, and like, you know what, that was a bad idea, we need to make it eight, right? Um, I think that Blizzard should be willing to look at that and make those uh, make those adjustments in like future fresh launches, uh, if that's something that they decide to do. Yeah, and it's definitely something that's not like locked in stone of this is how they're going to, to do it. It's very much a this is the, where their heads at and their ideas currently are kind of leaning towards of how to do this thing. Uh, when it comes to like, say like the four, the four content, like phase thing, uh, four waves of like content that they structured out and kind of laid out at BlizzCon. Now it's not really a, uh, a, this is 100% going to happen. You know, it's, it's, it's development. It could change. Like it could honestly be changed already. And we just not know about it. Um, yeah. I, I don't even know where they're currently at on that because like, I mean, I don't work there anymore, so. <laughs> right, right. So I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think, I think the team is very receptive to that kind of feedback because, because uh, you, you guys are incredibly detail oriented when it comes to say classic. Um, mm-hmm. It's, I, I would, I would expect them to still be weighing and uh, weighing options and seeing what's, what they feel is the correct solution uh, with pretty much anything, um, anything at all. And speaking of that, just to kind of dovetail off of that, um, so we have the stage releases, and then we also have, you know, a couple of things that were brought up at BlizzCon that were kind of concerning, I would say, is loot sharing and, like, sharding and right-click to report. Would you say those are still kind of being discussed internally, or are those, like, definitely going to be in the game? I would look at those as solutions to problems that we know are going to happen. Uh, and so it's kind of like those are... Th- those are the solutions that have been figured out that have at least worked for for retail. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes sense that they would kind of possibly consider them for classic. Now, it, there's it could not happen at all. Like, let's be real here. This is uh, totally unknown. It could we could get to classic, and these things could just straight up not happen. Uh, right. Specifically with loot trading and, and like you know say like right click reporting, those things could be taken out and they could be not not existent. But they're on the table for uh, like solutions to right. problems um i think you guys asked brian in uh in, yeah. in, the, in the interview as well whenever you know, we had the, the group uh classic panel and so it, he very much talks about right. these are kind of things that they're at least they're at least weighing they're they're on the table but they kind of they know that they don't want to do those particularly and they know the community is not going to like them but it's going to be like problems that have to be solved that, mm-hmm. that kind of thing it's the same way with uh with uh, sharding in general with say like the launch that we've talked about a lot it's it's a it's a problem that's going to happen and it's like how do you deal with this problem do you just let it become a monster or do you try to figure out how to how do we address this kind of thing right a big beautiful to, monster dude just just let yeah, it go let yeah. him hang dude just just to clarify real quick i i think uh i, I think some people might have been confused by the way you phrased it mm-hmm. when you said uh things that are going to happen you were talking about the problems right like you know yeah. that there's there's going to be a potential population issue you know that there's going to be uh like if they if the gm team like classic is not going to be the same way as it is in in or sorry like in retail vanilla wow is the same as it's going to be in wow classic like a potential solution is loot trading that was on the table so you know that like this could be a problem and those are the potential solutions that are um that have been kind of like brought forth so far so yeah. and that was that was a lot of um that was a lot of what we talked about actually at um, at BlizzCon. So after BlizzCon, the day after BlizzCon, we went and we got breakfast together, and I know I basically just like laid out everything that I was like, okay, like I don't like this because of this. I don't like you know the four the four phases because of this. I don't like sharding because of this. Loot trading, uh, you know, I, we had like. SPN we came to that breakfast hours. with an agenda, I'm telling you. Dude, I, I had a book <laughs> written. I literally was just like <laughs> but no, I, I came in and I, I said, like, look, this is this is how people feel about this, this is how I personally feel about this. Um and you know, we, we talked about everything. You know, I, I talked, I said like there needs to be probably at least six phases, uh at least six phases of content release. And uh I gave you I actually had written out uh what i thought and i talked about it in my my blizzcon video that i did after i got back and i said like this is this is what i think should happen uh this is what i know had been done on like private servers and uh i think this is like a happy medium i think you know obviously if you could have 11 patches that's probably best case scenario but uh i know on private servers they don't even start with 1.1 like they usually start with 1.2 they package 1.1 and 1.2 together you know and they'll they'll, they might package some of the stuff later on together like 1 1 111 and 112 are together uh, and so on so um, it's not something that's totally, you know, completely foreign, but, um, 
I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's interesting because they, I, I know you were willing to sit down with me and basically get that feedback the whole entire time. Um, and I, I talked your head off for, I think, dude, I, I legitimately think we were probably like talking for like four hours. We went and got breakfast and uh, Aspen was there. Review was there. It was, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Were you talking about the chat before we went and met up with, with Zach and Yeah, and, bef- and well, before and then that, yeah. Yeah, it was, so, it, was, it was about like four or five hours, but I think me yeah. and you were probably at breakfast for a good, a good maybe yeah. three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like there are, there are a lot of different problems that could arise with loot trading or sharding. And I, I think like this is one of the values of having a longer beta, which is something I prefer. They can test these variables. Like let's say they have one beta phase where a server cap is like, 4,000 and they see if they don't need sharding or and then they another beta phase where they try server cap 8,000 and they, and they try it with sharding you know what I mean they, they can test these things and run through them and see how they actually play out that's that's kind of what I would like to see or they, they 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 try loot trading they try it in a beta phase and they see how do players behave with this are players abusing this does it cause problems does it you know what I mean I, th- I really think they should actually try this stuff out and see what happens I I wouldn't put it past like them probably wanting to do that kinds of that kind of thing uh, or those kinds of things, sorry, um, mm-hmm. where they want, they probably want to know what the behavior is of, of these players in these scenarios. Um, yeah. Because a lot of these are, are unknowns. We we don't know how uh, uh, Classic would behave if you opened up the server with, you know, four or five times the cap that it was originally that like modern retail could possibly support now, or at least the modern infrastructure could support now. We, we don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure they would love the opportunity to literally play with all of you psychologically and see how you behave, <laughs> uh, just yeah. to see what would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I, I guarantee you, they would probably love to do something like that, uh, just to just to see just to see what would happen. No, absolutely. Like I can't speak on behalf <laughs> of everyone, but but we're down, dude. We're definitely down for that. Um, <laughs> sp- speaking of like testing and, and stuff, mm-hmm. like. Um, Obviously, you know, whatever happens with the beta happens. Uh, <laughs> do you think that, I, I guess I just like to hear your opinion. Do you think that a longer or a shorter beta, a shorter beta would be, would be better for the game? Uh, we're talking about better for the game. I think a shorter one, uh, but it's very focused. If you're confident enough in all the rest of the work, uh, specifically ones that are going to be uh, trouble, troublesome areas that, you know, have a lot of weird scripting or weird, like escort quests or mm. they function weird with with higher populations. Um, either those specific areas uh, you would focus like a lot on to try and be like, all right, say if we give everyone templated characters that start off at this level, let's just have them go into the zone, see what happens. Or say you know they run, they try to do a, a stress test of you know let's let everyone go just in like one area and see what happens, yeah. uh, just to kind of just to kind of play with it. That's what I, I would like to see. I yeah, would prefer I prefer shorter tests, but with more deliberate reasons behind the test that are yeah. a little bit more transparent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rather than a longer one, because then if you're doing the longer one, it burns out your hype, because your your hype is already so high. You're like, oh, I'm in this. It's real. But if you're if you're only having shorter tests, you're not you're not getting as fulfilled by playing the game essentially already. It's kind of the ongoing battle you have with beta testing something versus waiting for a launch, figuring it out. Uh, mm-hmm. Where do you, what do you, how do you balance that hype level? And that's going to be something they're probably even talking about right now, leading all the way up until what they decide to do. Of yeah. How do you balance yeah. that? Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. So let me ask you this: if you if you had to guess, what do you think is the next big piece of classic news that we get? Do you think it's another water cooler dev talk? Do you think it's an, Do you think it's a release date announcement? Do you think it's a beta or alpha announcement? What do you What do you think is on the horizon? And I guess I... Time, timeline also. Uh, so timeline, I honestly don't know, but I would say probably maybe in like a month ish, we'll probably start seeing more. And this is me guessing at this point. I don't know what okay. the strategy is. Uh, I don't, I, I have no idea. I am only working off of, uh, my guesses and my like expertise and kind of suggestions. If I wanted to see something happen, um, I would, I would love to see more information probably in the next like month or so. And I would okay. expect more piecemeal style answers rather than, uh, a huge like water cooler blog let's be real piece like piecemeal we're getting more more bits a little bit quicker i would i i would prefer that at least because we're getting more of a glimpse into uh, the progress rather than philosophy because we know philosophy we know how die hard and gung-ho they are with right. a lot of this stuff i'd love to hear more of uh philosophy and action that kind of thing uh you know say how are you approaching um, and this is a, a really good kind of philosophical question that uh, that we had on, on at least on the community team is 
um, what is what is say um, the mount system for you in in vanilla? When you think of the mount system, what do you think of? Right. Do you think of the mm. one twelve version, or do you think of the one? Is it one eight or one ten? Uh, when it used to have writing for each city, and so you had well, to get exalted to earn the writing for the cities. It's like what's you so understand? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it was for 90% of Vanilla WoW. Like mm -hmm. 90% of Vanilla WoW, mm -hmm. the mount system worked in a way that we don't think of as being the mount system. It Correct. changed mm -hmm. to what we think of it as being in, in 1.12 or 1.11. Mm -hmm. um, and then up until 1.4, they had the unarmored epic mounts. So are we going to have unarmored epic mounts? I think that'd be badass for the first four or five months. That'd be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, so if you if you get your epic mount before, uh, let's say 1.3, I think it was whenever they put in the armored uh, the armored epic mounts, uh yeah i don't I, I think it's cool i think it's just like a cool like little thing that you have so that you can flex on people with like yeah i got my epic mount early you know yeah yes. i think it, i think it'd be cool to start hearing bits of information like that with with say systems that you have a vanilla perception of in your mind of what mm -hmm. that system is but say it mm -hmm. changed at some point in vanilla and it's like which one is the correct one um mm -hmm. and i think those are kind of interesting because we all in our mind when you look back and think of vanilla you, you probably spent the most time in say 110 to the end and so say the, the mount system for example when it changed you you may remember that system but the majority right. of vanilla you actually spent using another system it's like which one is which yeah. one is the right one yeah those kinds of i would love to hear more of those kinds of things uh yeah. that goes even with talents are you going to go straight with 112 talents or are you going to take like little pieces of them from previous patches you, like how is that going to work exactly like I would love more of those little things of being like, this is what we're doing and this is why and getting kind of the understanding of this is why the direction that it's going, that kind of thing. Right. I think, uh, I know for me personally, yeah, one of our... is a great example as well. Like what patch do you go with tier sets that changed so quickly? Right. Like as far as like how the itemization changes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, I think as far as the mount system goes. So for those of you guys who don't know, Original mount system was you paid very little for the training and then you would pay a lot for the mount. Like it was, it was a little bit more role play oriented. And that's something that and you kind just, of see just, throughout the course of WoW. Just to add Sorry, one more what? piece onto that. There was Mechano Strider training. There was Ram training. There was oh. Wolf training. There was Raptor training. There wasn't just journeyman training or whatever, right? There mm -hmm. were unique. Sorry, go ahead. No, that was good. That was really good. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a lot more like role play. Like, I mean, it, it was, I mean, you even look back on, uh, in the alpha, whenever Torrens didn't have mounts and they eventually give them Kodos, they said, oh, well, the Torrens, they have planes running or whatever, uh, planes. I, I forgot, I forgot what it was exactly called. I think it was planes running. Um, but it was a lot more role play oriented and slowly throughout the course of vanilla and, and really throughout the course of the entirety of wow, it's kind of deviated away from more of the, the role play aspect of it. So it was okay. Early on, you get training for a specific type of mount, like you said, mechanical strider, whatever, and it's very cheap, but then you pay a lot for, you know, a, a nice epic horse or like a very like advanced mechanical strider. Like that, that makes more sense from a role play perspective, right? To pay a lot for something like that. And the training is not that big of a deal, but then it flipped because they're like, okay, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because what happens is people want to, they, they get their training and then they want to have multiple mounts. So I don't know. That's, that's, that's why I think that they changed it. At least it makes more sense that way from like a gameplay perspective, but kind of deviating from that role play aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. And I, I hope that that's how they have it because it, you know, those, those small accomplishments that you have to work towards and you only can really, you like, if you see a gnome on a night saber, that's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's just cool. It's just like another little flavor thing. It's another yeah. level of character progression to earn. Yeah. And you needed the reputation for that city mm -hmm. to be exalted, to even yeah. learn the, the writing of a city that you weren't from. Mm -hmm. So you had to actually kind of bust your ass to go get say you know night saber riding on a gnome like that was that was difficult <laughs> it took yeah. some time yeah when when they were coming up with these kind of philosophical questions and answers do you know if they were referencing you know possibly private server precedents like private servers that already done this before nostalgia for example did the team kind of look at that and say okay this is how these guys did it they had some success maybe this is a good starting point to talk about or was it kind of done from scratch uh, so I, I wasn't really a part of any of those conversations, but I would assume that they looked at some of that information. I, I mean, it's, it makes sense that they would. Uh, I honestly, I just don't know, but I'm assuming that they definitely did because it, why would you, why would you pass up on a lot of data that 
players already figured out that kind of thing uh why would you, why would you pass on all this information that's already there i mean the nostalgia guys they delivered like you know all of their data and, and information to to blizzard to kind of show like this is this is why this is viable this is all the stuff that we saw it's it's crazy to assume that none of that was referenced or used yeah absolutely Nice. Yeah, so I guess this is like maybe a weird question. Um, within like the what, because there's there's like the big WoW development team, right? Mm -hmm. How how does the main WoW de development team sort of perceive classic WoW? Is everyone excited for it, or if they're not directly working on it, are they sort of ambivalent? Or what's like the general vibe with people that aren't actually putting their hands on it? They're pretty excited about the project. Like in all really? honesty, they're they're pretty yeah. they're pretty excited about it because it's it's kind of it's another level of like kind of professional nerddom where you're seeing yeah. you're seeing these guys accomplish something that everyone thought you couldn't really do or couldn't really figure out a way to do based on what we had and they're working out and so they're working it out and it's kind of it's kind of adorable to see all these all these guys who are just kind of giddy at seeing how they're accomplishing all of these these problems because that's all development really a lot of development really is is how do you come up with a solution to this problem of something that you're trying to do uh, mm -hmm. And so it's interesting right. seeing where everyone's heads at, and they're trying to solve these problems. Uh, so they're fascinated with the project, and then most of the people who also want to play it, they uh, they're very excited about seeing the progress and hearing about it too. Like there was a there was a meeting at one point where someone had asked someone in leadership asked how uh, who here is excited to play classic, and keep in mind this is like a wow meeting. Everyone raised their raised their hands. <laughs> like everyone raised yeah. their hands because everyone wants to try this out and play this. Like yeah. It's it's very much it's very much a hype thing internally where at least anyone who's associated to WoW is very is pretty excited about it. There's some people, of course, that you know they don't they're not too they're not too keen on it. They just like the retail game and they're like, I did that already, and that's understandable. But yeah. the people who are excited mm -hmm. about it are very passionate about it. Has mm -hmm. there been conversation from anybody on the team, even in passing, just like joking around about potentially continuing beyond Classic into Burning Crusade and possibly even Wrath? I have heard no conversation of that, like business-wise, uh, mm -hmm. but it's it's like a conversation of, uh, wouldn't this be really cool to kind of see? And I, right. I, hundred percent on board. I would play. I'm. I would be more excited to play TBC if I knew TBC was going to be a thing uh, than I would be for Classic. And all honestly, just because all honesty, just because I, TBC was the expansion where I fell in love with the game and really kind of came into my own. Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, I was still Sounds about right. I would love to play through that again because I never got to experience really hitting cap in vanilla and experiencing the content and then going from vanilla to BC. Yeah. Well, it sounds about right for, you know, Blood Elf Rep Paladin to, to like Burning <laughs> Crusade so much. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. No, I don't know. If, if Burning yeah. Crusade comes out, I'm, I might end up playing a, a Blood Elf and Burning Crusade because, I, dude, I... I was the highest ranked alliance rep paladin in our battle group in arenas in 5v5. Mm -hmm. And it was like me, and then there was two blood elves ahead of me. Is at least like at you know at the time that I was playing, and then you know, I, I stopped. But two, and then it was just the entire page on the ladder was blood elves, and there was like some some dwarves sprinkled in, dwarves and humans sprinkled in at the bottom. But yeah, there was a uh, yeah, I'm so still, still a little bit salty. It's only been ten years, I'm still getting over it. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, go ahead, say say about you. You're you're telling a question. Well, you asking I, a question? I, I was gonna say yeah, you play a blood elf rep pally. So in vanilla classic, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna mm -hmm. be? Uh, I think so far uh, it sounds like I'm gonna be a human paladin. Oh, uh, very good. It very sounds like good. I'm gonna be a human paladin. I've I've talked to I've talked to you guys. I think I'm probably gonna end up. Uh, Playing with with S fan and everybody. There you go. Cool. You'll be on the show. Disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah. Man. I think I'm gonna be a human paladin. Uh, and then if my horde my horde character is probably gonna be an undead rogue. So. Nice, nice. Okay. There you go. I don't I don't get paladins on horde, but hey, I'll I'll play as a rogue at least. That's what I played in back in vanilla anyway. So why not? There you it's go. funny that you say that because I always say that if I didn't play a paladin, I would play a rogue now because I've been playing retail WoW so much that I've gotten used to combo points. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I could probably play a rogue just fine now. But uh, yeah, it's funny. It's funny how that works. Yeah, um, managing Inquisition is like the same mm -hmm. thing as managing, say, Slice and Dice. Right. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that'd be great. So we're, we're planning on playing on a PvP server. We want to play on our server together where Stay Safe and I are going to go Alliance. Tips is going to go Horde. With Krom and, and, and some of our other friends. And we will each have our own guild. So S Fawn will have a guild. Mm -hmm. Tips out will have a guild on the Horde. S Fawn's Alliance, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll have my own guild on Alliance as well. It's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of fun. And you guys have actually already started your guild applications. 
right? Yeah. Both of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you guys yeah. are starting to go loud because I have not started yet. Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna get going on that stuff sometime soon. My general thought was. I don't really want to get into it too much until there's another testing period out, but it's been, I, I was expecting it a lot sooner. I was expecting it this month uh, at the latest initially uh, I, after BlizzCon. I thought it would be no later than February, but here we are. So uh, I might, I might get going on that stuff too. And uh, I know a lot of people, especially from my old guild have been messaging me, especially with like the, uh, like joining method and stuff like, like my, my method jacket on today. Don't I? Um, you got the jacket, but you don't got the chair. Yeah. I, I have. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Let's go, Scott. Where are you at, dude? <laughs> put a method to the just put a yeah, I know exactly. So um, no, yeah, I uh, especially with joining method, a lot of people are like, so are you still kind of doing the same thing? And my current plan is is still to kind of like have my my same guild uh, instead of running like a method classic or something because I'm the first like method classic, I guess, signee. Um, As fan, I do plan on playing holy. By the way, I'll pocket heal you. Very good. I like that. I like the sound of that. Holy. As all paladins should be holy, except for me. I can be red. I'm a special snowflake. <laughs> no, no, I uh, just help yeah. me get my get, just help me get my 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 cleanse li uh, librum and my flash of light librum. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, then you're good. Then set. you're good. <laughs> Pretty good lions, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, it's gonna be good, dude. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so uh, you know, as far as that goes, like you know, we we know you're gonna play alliance now. Good choice. You're gonna play paladin. Another good choice. You're gonna play with us. Good choice. Um. <laughs> Do you think uh, kind of you you said you you started playing towards the end of vanilla and then you got into it in Burning Crusade but you didn't uh, you didn't like I guess really like hate your because you, obviously like you didn't you didn't like hate your full stride in vanilla what is the thing that you personally are most excited about uh, like a, a certain thing is there a certain raid or uh, anything specific that you didn't get to do in vanilla that you really want to go through and you want to accomplish uh, if so uh, what is that doing the actual uh, black rock dungeons uh, oh yeah i never got to experience doing black rock dungeons uh these so are the I, best I, ones i really want to do those uh and the same with uh, molten core as well uh yeah. i never i never saw molten core until uh we were already in burning crusade so my first time oh, right. seeing ragnaros i could just one shot him so i was yeah. like this is what's the big deal about this thing i never got to, <laughs> i never got to experience something like something like raggy uh or say the like the, the living bombs uh, mm -hmm. i uh, I want to I want to do all of that stuff because I, I I just never saw yeah. it. I never could see it. I think I hit like it was somewhere between forty to fifty was like the level that I actually hit in vanilla before BC one. So I never got to, right. I just never got to see any of that content. Yeah, and there's a lot of people like that, and I, I think that uh, actually it's funny. You're the example, uh, or pretty close to the example that I give of a lot of people who are really excited about classic people who maybe started to play back then or started playing after classic came out. And you want to go back and either experience it or just go finish, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people didn't get to finish. I mean, you might talk to some guys who, um, like a lot of the method guys have been playing, like, you know, since vanilla. Some of them have, like, Sko, for example. Like, people have seen the video of Sko and his mom, Sko and his mind of Menethil, where he's playing two handed fury and just like smashing people. A lot of the guys who've been playing WoW for a long time, like they they might have gone through and they might have completed all the content and they might be supportive of Vanilla or they might be, you know, oh, this is cool. But as far as them personally, like being excited to play, it's like, well, I don't know if that's something that I want to do, right? Because, hey, I, like, I've already done this. Yeah, um, yeah for, for, I me, think, for, for me, for example, like it's it's like what you're talking about with, say, finishing an expansion. So like mm -hmm. I've, I've finished every expansion, uh, every, every single one, uh, except for vanilla i never got to go through the raid tiers of vanilla that's the only one i never got to do uh i you know i did sun, i did sun well i did arthas like i've done all of these i just never got to actually go into og nax ramus uh molten core or even blackwing layer i just never got to do any of these mm -hmm. yeah and I, and I think i think that's going to be an awesome experience um like i know uh, a lot of people say like, okay, it's not going to be the exact same, and that's true. Like, it's not going to be the exact same as it initially was, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be a really cool and really special experience, even for somebody who's already experienced it once before. Oh, yeah. uh, I think I think classic launch is going to be. I mean, it, it's going to be an experience for so many people that. Like, dude, it's going to be magical. <laughs> like, like well, I'm not I'm not trying to romanticize dude, it. You're, but you're it's totally gonna be something right. Else. Yeah. Classic WoW content is great. It'll probably differ a little bit from what it was in vanilla WoW, but I think Githison said this. We were talking uh, before we went live. You said the the gameplay of Classic WoW is like the, the, the community or something like that. You said something something to that effect, right? And 
it's so true. Like I was sitting here bored last night and I was like, I was just thinking to myself, I want to go on adventure with my friends. And like, there's, there's no game right now that gives me that adventure. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't scratch that itch. And so even if there are, even if it is a little bit different here and there, it's going to be an adventure again. And, um, that's, that's the greatest thing about classic. Wow. If you ask me. Absolutely. <laughs> and like, I don't know if this is, if you've ever played like a fresh server launch, but it's, it's insane. Like it's, it's an experience you can't replicate in any other game. And uh, I was actually curious as to, as to your predictions. How big do you think the launch is going to be? I mean, has it you know crossed your mind like a figure, like hundreds of thousands, millions possibly? How how big do you think that launch is going to be? Uh, see, this is this is interesting because it's this is where we get into the total speculation of kind of what you think it might fall into. Yeah. Uh, I would expect. I would expect to see definitely over like a million viewers on Twitch, uh, just given given the caliber of people who want to play uh, Classic and who I've talked to personally about Classic. Like, I would expect I would expect you to see over a million a million viewers on say Twitch on launch day. Yep. Um, now player wise, player wise is interesting. Uh, of course, we know there's going to be a drop off. Like people are going to rush in, they're going to try it out. There's going to be a lot of people who never got to experience it, but just want to check it out. Uh, and it, they might find out it's not for them. Um, and I could see them, you know, churning out pretty hard. Um, I would probably expect maybe, and this is me just guessing, total guessing. Um, uh, I would guess that you would see maybe about 20, 20% ish after like, like the first month or two that are still playing it based off of who played it on the launch day. Uh, and then it would just kind of fall from there uh, just because mm -hmm. classic is a very niche thing. Once you get farther along, uh, I would still probably say on launch day, you're going to see a million plus concurrence, most likely, uh, given just the enthusiasm around the project. Uh, I, I would expect I would expect numbers in that range. And I'm cu I'm curious if uh, I can get anyone to anyone at Blizzard to tell me what it is after this happens uh, uh, to see if I can, like, confirm my theories of how I believe that the community is going to behave when it comes to right. the project. Like we no. know, we know, like the diehards are going to be success, uh, like uh, are going to make it successful, but it's uh, kind of what is that? What does that success actually look like? Right now, eighty percent isn't something like uh, most people hear that and like, oh, like that's that's oh, that's a lot, and yeah, it is. But I think that pretty much follows in line with what uh, several people I know. Nixium, Nixium has said like what he thinks. He thinks this will be a big spike. I actually completely agree with Nixium. Big spike. And then it's going to dip off pretty hard because anytime anything is as hyped as classic is hyped and it's just anything, right? Anything that has that much hype behind it, it's going to have a huge spike at the beginning. And then it's going to have a pretty steep drop off because people are going to find out whether it's, it's for them or not. But I think that it's going to hit that point and then kind of level out and then maybe even start growing and maybe in the same way that we saw uh, old school RuneScape pan out. So, I mean, that's, that's what I would hope for. And that's what I could totally see happening because people might get – um, people might go try retail, go back to retail and say, you know what, maybe I like classic more and then go back to classic. I could, I could personally, I could totally see that happening, you know, cause it's just like two different games for, uh, you know, two different people. Like you got these people like this kind of game. These people like this kind of game. And there's some people in the middle that like both. And, and I think that's fine. You know, people go in and they try and find out which one they like more and then they can roll with it. I expect like diehard players to, uh, alternate when they're playing retail versus classic, uh, based on, mm -hmm. Uh, the content waves that were, are probably <laughs> planned for classic. So we'll probably mm -hmm. see like uh, when a patch for WoW happens, people are going to rush in, play that, do the new raids, do the new content. When the new content for classic comes in, uh, you'll see people kind of, uh, the, yeah. I guess the super diehard players will kind of swap to the other, do that one. That's that's yeah. honestly the behavior I probably am going to exhibit when it comes to classic, uh, just because I still love doing the new raids, doing the retail stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, but I still want to play all the classic content. Like I'll go back and forth constantly. It's the only thing that's going to be awful is it's going to kill any time to play any other games. But oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Do, you, do you think that they're and this seems smart to me? I think that they'll probably do this. Do you think that they'll stagger classic and retail WoW content releases? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They absolutely would do that. See, I, I think I think that that's something that's probably not a good idea for classic. I, I think because. Uh, I think if you go and you purposely, like, purposefully try and, okay, if we have this come out in January for retail and then this comes out in March for classic and then you just kind of go and you stagger them, like, let's say you have a patch every six months 
and then you put those six months and you stagger them to be every three months there's some sort of wow content coming out like i think that looks really good on paper but the problem is is that you're going off the assumption that the people who are playing classic are going to want to play retail and the people that are playing retail are going to want to play classic and sure some people are but you shouldn't use the other version of the game as supplementary content for the version of the game that people want to play is the way that I see it. Um, so specifically if, with, I mean, I, 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 I think, I think there will be crossover. Um, there will be some, maybe, maybe not a lot, but there definitely will be crossover. And I mean, let's say you have five months between classic, like content release phases. Mm -hmm. Why not just squeeze in, you know, it's like, like classic wow retail wow classical wow, retail wow content that just makes sense yeah. to me there's, there's nothing wrong with that it makes sense it makes sense yeah. from a business standpoint yeah it's not uh, necessarily going to be a purposeful decision but it's something that's it's going to happen anyway just say oh, with, naturally say yeah. with the pacing of say classic content you can't you're going to have to do them probably like five months apart uh somewhere is somewhere in that range of a typical yeah. patch cycle right that you would expect for retail uh, right that makes and sense. if that's naturally going to happen why wouldn't you not just play into it where it's going to fall that way anyway rather than line things right. yeah exactly because then you're gonna well, have you're gonna have a lot of players uh who are going to have a subpar experience because now they have to choose between one or the other versus you could make a potentially everyone happy anyway just by the way that it's naturally going to go right that's true i i, I agree with that i guess what my point was uh more than anything is like going retail classic retail classic retail classic as opposed to because if you go with a more fleshed out approach to the patch release in classic you are going to have a time where you go like retail classic classic retail classic retail classic class you see what i'm saying yeah it'll uh it, it won't necessarily be alternating um perfectly every single time because in actual retail vanilla wow you had i think like the dire mall patch came out uh i think it was three and a half months after launch it was close to four months yeah. after launch. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then even with between that, you had the Mardon patch come out like almost right after launch. Well, you, uh, which you, just, I'm oh, sorry. Just, oh, sorry. Uh, I was, was going to say, say, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, just to clarify real quick, cause I saw a chat freaking out that no, that month, like time frame I threw out is totally just pulling a number out of my ass. That's, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. not an actual thing. Uh, I saw people kind of like, like kind of freaking out a little bit. I was like that five month thing. I'm just, talking about it from the structure see everyone's relieved everyone's relieved <laughs> yeah. okay go no, ahead sorry no, well now i forgot what i was gonna say well here here no, stay really safe you start talking and i'll talk at the same time as you and maybe i'll just kick it back in the gear <laughs> oh you know what i remember what i was gonna say there it is so, um i just remembered yep like so with retail wow there are typically like four content phases in retail wow like a retail wow expansion right um that that might have influenced why they wanted to do a four phase classic well so they could line it up just alternate them right um and if they like they, they might have realized this is just not going to work for classic well we need to have six or seven content phases um so it, it might not be as neat as retail classic retail classic it, it might be something like esfan said where it's retail classic retail classic class you know what i mean um so yeah but th that might have been the original logic behind having four content phases to match it up really nicely with retail well Mm -hmm. who knows yeah i think it's definitely possible um what do you think Githesons is is kind of like this actually is, is more specific to the earnings call but like talking about releases and stuff like that uh, one thing that i noticed during the earnings call was there was a line that was said that that went something along the line of um they're not blizzard activision blizzard isn't planning any frontline releases in 2019 mm. um and off of that statement, there's been some speculation that Classic could be delayed, which led to, I think his name is Bornak? Bornak, mm -hmm. right? Or Bornak. Mm -hmm. Bornak. Bornak, yeah. Yeah, uh, Bornak going on the forums and, and kind of saying, no, uh, it is going to be releasing in 2019. Um, do, do people at Activision Blizzard look at this as kind of a smaller project? I mean, why wasn't it called a frontline release? Is it like a technical term in the industry? Like, uh, do you Yeah, I, I know a lot of people were pretty like, Wait, what? Like, I don't know if it was like a stockholder speak or, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. If, uh, I, I don't know if you can speak to that. Yeah, I can. I can kind of touch on it a little bit uh, because it, this is just me assuming uh, where their mentality kind of lies viewing the product. Um, it's very much that kind of a, a an investor kind of speak uh, when they're talking about front line, front line mm -hmm. releases. Frontline releases is more of a way of describing a title that we're going to like sell in, a, say, a retail environment. Um, That's what I thought. 
like with something like classic, it's probably, you're probably not going to see it ever touch retail because it honestly doesn't need to. Um, it's literally, it's just going to be something like completely digital that you're getting with your regular wow sub. Uh, mm-hmm. There's nothing to, this... there's nothing to really sell there for investors to honestly care about. Uh, and which it means a good thing for people who are the classic community as well. It means yeah. that the project is still being viewed as something that is going to be an accessory to wow rather than its own thing to say, be dictated by its own say uh, mm-hmm. revenue, for example. Do you this think that there's a, that it's kind I'm of sorry. I, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I was just saying when we've talked about this amongst ourselves, do, do you think that there's a chance that they might put out like a collector's edition or anything with like its own, I don't know, non-combat pads, something similar to the original collector's edition, but maybe not quite the same. Uh, is that something that could potentially happen as like a retail thing or would that be like a digital purse just more than likely if they did that? I guess I could, same thing, I guess. I could see it probably being more of a, a digital thing if they were to do something along those lines, if I were to guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could it could honestly, I mean, I think personally, I think it's a cool idea. There was a forum post a while back where I talked about this because uh, mm-hmm. someone asked since they had purchased an original vanilla CE, uh, would they be able to get their pets? And I kind of explained more along the the philosophy of linking the two of being, uh, no, they should be totally separate. Uh, I agree. You should not, like, you still have those things that you bought before. These should be a totally, totally separate thing. I, I would, I, I can't really say whether one way is going to happen or the other, because to be honest, we haven't gotten there yet. It could happen where the classic team wants to do some awesome flavor thing and give those out. We don't know. Uh, it could be a, a scenario where if you had an original one, you you have those, but then there's also a way to say, get it just for classic. I don't know. Uh, right. I think it would be cool to see because uh, one, it generates, uh, it would be, it would generate revenue for the project, which is good. Mm-hmm. If you're a classic fan, you want that because that means the project is making money and it's justifying the business, ju- the justification for making it. Uh, you mm-hmm. want that, you want that to happen. And something like saying like a C saying like selling like a CE that makes sense. Uh, because it's something simple, it's not impacting the game, it's just making money for the thing that you love and you're trying to support, which is good. You want that to happen. I, I, I would hope yeah. that I, I would kind of, it would be cool to get that. I would go, I yeah. would buy it. I'm not going to get it free anymore, but I would buy that if that exists. Yeah, I would probably, I'd probably buy that. I think. I, abs- I, did, I, mean, I absolutely would. Yep. Yeah. 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 Even if it was physical, if it was digital, I don't care. I would buy it because it's, it's going to be something related to classic specifically supporting it. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been big on like uh, I'm not too big on like cosmetics. I'm not like a big mount farmer and stuff like that. Like I say that, but I have a bunch of kale skins on League of Legends, but it's different. Uh, but I, bought, like, I bought the KDA skins immediately. I never bought a League skin before, <laughs> but once KDA came out, I bought them all. Yeah. So like I um, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not huge on like you know getting cosmetics and stuff in the store. I know some people are interested in that. Um, but I think I would get it just to like flex on people. Like I, I know that's one of those things. Like if I had that now, if I had the collector's edition for vanilla now, like it's just it's just drop it on the table, dude. Like well, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, okay, if you meet someone today that's like, I played the vanilla WoW beta back in 2004, you're like, whoa. In the future, it's going to be demo. I played the BlizzCon demo. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole reason I use my 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 BlizzCon bear, my big Blizzard bear. It's just because yeah. no one else has one. Yeah, yeah. there you go. I feel, feel better about myself. I'm like, yeah, suck it. I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what, like I have one too, and uh, I well, it was given to me by a viewer. And like I said, I'm not real big on mounts, but there's certain things like that mount is like really awesome, just because like nobody else has one, and a. Uh, the Baron mount is special to me because every single time that I had quit the game, I always wanted the Baron mount. And I've seen it drop before. I would lost it. Um, but every single time that I quit, I would come back and I would farm Baron. I would farm Strat- Strath Undead over and over and over again, and I would never see it drop. One day on stream, I was like, look, this is just one of the things that I need to do. I need to get this done. And I like I finally got the mount. It was cool. Now I think this drop rate has gone up like a hundred times since Vanilla WoW. But still, it was cool that I finally got it. Uh and hopefully I can get that in classic, because that would be cool. Dude, I got the Baron mount on accident. Um a friend of mine during Wrath wanted me to help him like go through Strat and, and go for the mountain. I didn't care at all about mounts, and I still don't care about mounts today. Yeah. But uh he like disconnects like five minutes before Baron. And I just like sit there and I wait for him. And uh, he like had this habit of disconnecting all the time because like he wasn't supposed to be playing late at night and his parents would come into his room and stuff like uh-huh. that. 
So, uh, so I wait for like 10 minutes and I'm just like, ah, he's not coming, whatever. I'll just finish this off and go. Frickin' drops. I pick it up. Literally 60 seconds or less later, he logs in. Sorry about that, dude. Uh, let's let's go kill Baron. I'm just like, dude, riding the mountain. Dude, why didn't you wait sorry. for him? <laughs> I wait. I wait like 10 minutes. I was like, he's not coming back, you know. And it was did you delete that? Did you delete that mountain too? No, no, no. But I but I had to delete Mimiron's head. Uh, just uh, wait, was he still in your group? He was still um, in your group, right? I can't remember. This was this was like early wrath, so I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if loot trading was a thing when it might have been late. Wrath it was yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, dude. Another reason. Don't don't put loot trading in. There yeah. you go. No, I think uh, no, I think uh, I, I don't know if it even would have worked if he was disconnected, but still, it's just funny to think about. Um, yeah. So, do you think uh, you we we talked about um, we talked about Bornak a little bit. He mentioned in a post recently that the game's still, you know, set to be released in 2019. Don't worry, there's no delays. Uh, do you think that, you know, if do you think there's any chance that anything gets delayed? Like if Blizzard comes out and they say like, okay, we're aiming for this release date, they're going to get it by then after they announce it. I don't know. I I don't know in recent. I I just don't know. Like, have they announced anything before and delayed it? I know they've pulled it up. They pulled BFA up by about a month. We I. I think I'm pretty sure we've delayed stuff before, well, but it's it's usually when we don't tell you guys what the actual date is and say it right. slips uh, and it's something that's just not communicated uh, because we're it's just not ready yet. Um, right. I don't see that happening with Classic. I I didn't hear of anything that indicated that it would be delayed whatsoever. Uh, but mm-hmm. if it did, uh, I would I would trust that that call is coming from the Classic team actually asking for it to be pushed back because they're just not ready yet. Uh, right. If that were to happen. Um, and I would welcome that because that's a sign that the classic team is like saying, no, no, it's just, it's not ready. It's just not yeah. ready yet. And it happens if that happens, uh, if that does, I won't be mad. I'd be cool with it. Um, I mm-hmm. don't think it will though. Uh, it doesn't, I didn't hear of anything indicating that it would. Um, so I have I hope, no I hope it takes as long as possible. Yeah. yeah if, 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 if yeah. they need, if they need longer, please take it because this is, this is a special thing. Like, yeah. That's, that, I think, I think we, we would all agree that it, hopefully it takes as long as possible. I mean, uh, clearly, if if it comes out sooner, like you know, as far as YouTube and Twitch and, and all that memory goes, like it's better for our channels and whatnot because that's like what you know, that's what we really want to do and all that. But I would rather have the game be good than just get to do it now. You know, like just be patient. Yep. You know, as fan, the patient. That's my title. And also okay. today, you know, <laughs> just first first impressions are very very important, right? So if they release in, you know, June and it's just not ready, it would have been better for it to release in September and have it be flawless, right? So that's what I prefer. Yeah. Especially in a situation as delicate as classics where you do have, you know, as much as we don't want to talk about it, there is this kind of competitor out there, you know, the private servers and stuff like that. Um, If classic doesn't really stick at the start, it gives people that provide that service a lot more, I guess, cloud and leeway to to kind of provide the service for, for their audience and stuff. So, yeah, definitely, even if it has to get delayed, the better the product is at launch. I mean, I think the better for everyone at the end of the day. Mm hmm for sure i agree uh, you, um we you know what we have sorry go if you have a follow-up to that well i was gonna say kind of talking about you know bornak and um you know smaller like talking about like the the like cm team right mm-hmm. and if there's a smaller cm team gms are the 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 entire like appeal system everything is like totally different in retail wow now than it was you know 14 years ago um what kind of impact do you think that could have on classic by having like a smaller CM team by having, uh, by not having like a team of GM, like a fully fleshed out team of GMs like before, as far as like nothing being automated in the past compared to now. Well, yeah. And that, that influences maybe why they wanted to add right click reporting. So yeah, yeah. I guess that's, that's what I was going to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. So perfect. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Well, you, uh, you cut out in the call for a second, so I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, um, Talking about like having a smaller CM, GM, just moderation team in general as compared to the past, mm-hmm. compared to the past, excuse me. Um, and then like stay safe added in like, you know, the the potential of there being a right right click report and all that. Uh, how do you feel about that? Like what kind of impact do you think that could have? It's it's inter- it's interesting from a player psych- psychology perspective of seeing how the classic community would respond to say like a right click report. Uh, I, I'm interested in seeing how they would behave with it. Uh, mm mm-hmm. Oh, it would but, be terrible, dude. We would be terrible. Yeah, but uh, it's it's inter- it's interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think there's necessarily really a concern with say GM staff uh, 
and it's more so of just something that uh, say the modern client has that is that we use that's use that that does work and it's useful. Um, keep keep in mind, there's still a lot of stuff built into say the right click reporting that oh, tries to do the best it can to mitigate any sort of malicious use. And if players are maliciously reporting people, they do get suspended for that. That is something that is against the rules and will get mm -hmm. you it will get you in trouble. Um, most, uh, you know, I know a lot of the feedback is actually coming from players who say I've seen like, you know, a one or two maybe YouTube videos about it or haven't played the retail game. But players who maliciously abuse any sort of reporting system or the GM staff uh, to do any sort of nefarious things like mm -hmm. uh, that'll get you in trouble. Don't do that. To, uh, yeah. don't don't do that uh it'll don't snitch it'll get you it'll get you a longer suspension than what you were trying to give someone else um just yeah. don't just don't do that um there's a there's a there's good reason for the classic community to not to not be okay with that feature and i understand that um i yeah i'm i'm, cu I'm just kind of curious i want to see i would love to see both worlds where one existed and one didn't just to kind of see mm -hmm. what the difference between I, the two would be i definitely think psychology that, aspect yeah. to it because like the social dynamics and just the meta of these two games is so different, a solution that was wise in retail WoW might not necessarily be, or I would say definitely would not be wise for classic WoW. It would require a different solution. It could require a different solution. It could be the same pro. It could be the same program, but it functions totally differently on the back end. We don't know. I don't think that decision's even been made yet. Um, it could be. It could be totally different to where say uh it doesn't actually do anything until game master actually reviews it which is mm -hmm. for the most case how the retail one work like uh mm -hmm. nothing actually is done unless a game master actually gets reviewed but say if it's say it's like a chat thing someone will get say squelched they won't get suspended or kicked out of the game they'll get squelched and then it'll get reviewed by a game master and then decided what to what to be done um the classic one is probably going to function somewhere in that lines if it does have that keep in mind we still don't even know if Classic is going to have right click reporting. Uh, that isn't that isn't something that's like communicated or concrete. Soon. It's it's something that could not even be happening, and we're being afraid of something that might not even exist. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's interesting to think about just of seeing how players would behave with that, seeing how the classic community would behave with that system, uh, right. just to run like a, a cruel little experiment on all of them, just to be like, let's just turn it on and see what happens for like a week or two. Right, yeah, I think uh, you you would say that it's important. I know that's something that you know the the, the sky is falling. We have a tendency to do that uh, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh, but do you still think it's important to um, express like you know properly express like you know we this is something that like we don't want to see happen, right? The right click report, yeah. and you know, we've talked about loot trading, four phases, all that. Absolutely. Uh, I know. If, yeah, the dev team know. sees that. The dev team will absolutely see that. If you guys are being very vocal on not wanting something like that, uh, it's trust me, they're players just like you guys are. They uh, some of these solutions that they have to propose sometimes they don't actually want, but it's the best solution to a problem that they have, and they probably don't even want it. Like I could guarantee you, no one on the classic team actually wants to have say sharding, for example, but right. they might have to have it at the beginning because if it gets insane, like we are all expecting it to be, you're gonna have to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of one of those one of those worlds where the, this whole thing could just be a, a huge explosion that we kind of need to yeah. set at least some stuff up just in case uh, yeah it, but it's something that they're monitoring discussions on and, and constantly evaluating on if this is the correct solution to the problem i i really hope that there's like a stress test or something that's done like maybe like a closed beta or clo closed stress testing period or something where they okay let it roll throw them out there let's just let's just have everybody go in no sharding and just see what happens with with 5,000 people in the world, right? Just see what happens. Uh, yeah. And then you do it again with sharding. I think that way you, uh, first off, the team gets to see it. That's, that's honestly, that's the most important thing. But also having that level of transparency and having so many other people, you know, in the community getting to see it as well. They're like, oh, okay, I see how this plays out. Or, oh, you know what? We don't need sharding at all. Like this, this actually works out just fine. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, so... I guess like as like sort of a sort of follow up to that question, what do you think the chances are that we don't have a beta or alpha and we only have like a couple two day stress tests or something like that? Do you think that's possible? I I think that would happen, but that would be like the worst case scenario for probably the the okay. the game. I could see that potentially happening of just like stress testing, but that's literally the worst case scenario. And I'm pretty sure that team does not want that kind of thing. Uh, Okay. They would. They. That's not. That's not. A, it's. It's good data for a stress test, but it's not good enough data for 
say how the zones are functioning or how the scripting mm-hmm. is working. Like, that's not enough right. to work on. Yeah. It could be they like open up a zone for a day. Uh, that's something that could be a potential where it's like, hey, let's 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 take uh, the the concept of shorter tests, but let's just be like, all right, uh, on this between this time and this time, uh, uh, say Westfall is going to be enabled. Everyone starts with a templated character. Go and you do the zone. Or you know, a couple of days later, it's like, all right, Westfall works. We fixed some things that were a problem. Uh, everyone now do uh, Stone Talon Mountains. Let's see how this works. Uh, do the same thing for Dark Shore. Can you go down the list of zones that you feel might be a problem? Uh, right. I could see that happening of like short term bursts, but very specific on what they need to work on. Mm-hmm. And all of right. this obviously happens uh, hopefully before Classic launches. But I wanted to ask you after Classic launches, um, has there has it ever been communicated that there's a plan to sort of monitor how the game is is being played after launch to see if anybody's exploiting? anything you know any old exploits or possibly new exploits that that come out you know as a result of a downport from the existing client um in particular there, there's a couple of examples on private servers with regard to like gold farming dire mall east gold farming you know it's a very very profitable business stuff like that um will, will there be a team to kind of monitor what's going on with the game after it releases and potentially adjust any exploits or bugs that might you know be a byproduct of of the client downporting I'm pretty sure that will be taken care of, and I kind of know some details. That's going to be stuff that uh, you never hear the information about. Uh, but pretty sure that that will be covered, and people will be watching. Okay, uh, that should be that should be pretty that should be fine. That's going to be pr- really easy stuff because, luckily for in this case, say uh, classic since it's running on say the skeleton of you know the modern game a lot of the advances and stuff that the end processes that they have for, you know, say people doing exploiting, they're going to have some of that, some of the, some of that power. Uh, so I wouldn't expect a problem. People are still probably going to bot. That's going to, you can't stop that for permanently. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, you can ban it swiftly and harshly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, just gold as it pops up. Gold, gold selling? selling. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. It'd, be the same. Like- It'd be the same thing. Uh, right. I would expect it to be treated the same way like the 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 live game is. I wouldn't yep. I can't foresee really any difference. And keep in mind this is all conversations that aren't even happening yet, I don't think. Uh mm-hmm. but I would expect that to be covered. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't see any issue at all with with that being taken care of. Uh yeah. I, I did want to ask you guys a question. That okay. I, I you know if I've missed this on a classic cast, I'm sorry. Um what do you guys think about since uh since it's using, like, say the demo, for example, used, say, the 735, uh, 7.3 client, right? And mm-hmm. it's using a lot of that, but it's repurposing all the data for Classic. Uh, mm-hmm. Since it's using those those older client or the, the current clients and the current, say, APIs, how do you think that's going to impact, say, add-ons, for example? Mm. Um, uh, this, see, this is, this is something I've been really fascinated on lately and up leading up to me, of course, being laid off now, not being able to participate in this conversation internally. <laughs> But right. uh, I was very curious on on what you guys think because there's a world where say some of the cra- some of the crazy add-ons that exist in retail could work in classic or players will figure out how to get them to work in classic because you're using say the modern client. So you might see yeah. an add-on say particularly like weak auras ex- for example exist in classic or an mm-hmm. ad- or like something like LVI existing in classic because you would have a way to create those in there because you're using all of the modern stuff. Like mm-hmm. this is just something to talk about. Or, yeah. So that's I, how I think... it was on the demo. Uh, you know, it was using the 7.3.5 API, right? Um, mm-hmm. From what I understand, and I, I don't know a ton about Atmos, but from what I understand, the vanilla WoW API was actually much more open ended. You could do a lot more than you can do on the modern API. And so my concern would be that things would be too open ended. And you could, you, you could do a lot of memey stuff um, mm-hmm. in vanilla WoW, and you've seen it on private servers. Um, so my concern is that it would be too open-ended, not that you would have, uh, modern stuff being backported. That's actually a lesser concern for me, I guess. Yeah. I, I think, uh, there's things that you could do in vanilla that are kind of crazy. Like I know, uh, this was something that had to be fixed. Now I don't Now Here's the thing. I don't know if this, cause I didn't do this in retail vanilla. Um, but I, I did do this on private server. I tested on private and it worked and then they had to go and they had to fix it like server side. Um, 
there was something you there's something you could do where you could use like the on use effect of an ability or a trinket or, or sorry of, of a weapon or a trinket or something and you could use a well i guess you would only use it on a weapon right because it would only, it would only be useful in combat you would do it and then you would swap it to another weapon and you would keep the buff whereas whenever you use something whenever you use a, a trinket or a weapon or whatever that gives you a buff for however much period of time uh, it actually drops off of you whenever you equip something else but there was something you could do with this like you could, you could have a script that goes and you run it like with a macro swaps it and then you keep the buff like for an on use for a weapon or something and then it doesn't work uh or it, it, it does work and it wouldn't have worked normally such as like you know no much crowd pummeler was like that and then that's been fixed since then I mean, um, yeah, like regarding the question about add-ons, I definitely think there's there's a very high risk for some of the more modern add-ons to kind of creep their way into classic. And I do think it's going to be a problem. I do think there has to be some kind of intervention. Um, obviously, there were add-ons during vanilla, and there shouldn't be any restriction in terms of the ability to make add-ons. But I mean, there's a lot of things you could do that I think trivialize the vanilla experience and uh, in some ways are just completely contradictory to what vanilla was about. Yeah, uh, add-ons like that. I, I do hope that Blizzard steps in and says, you know, this add-on, no, like break the add-on in some way. This cannot be in the game. Yeah, um, right. You can create so many things. I mean, you, you talked about weak auras, like weak auras, like some kind of looking Whoa. for dungeon or looking for group style tool could be created. Like a lot of things that could really destroy what vanilla was about could come into the game via add-ons. And well, yeah, I, just, I think I hope something's done about it. So. I was going to say, am I am I misremembering? I feel like at BlizzCon, Ian, uh, as Ghost has talked about this, he said if there were add-ons that make it in into Classic... I, I remember now, that too. That just yeah. fundamentally undermined the Classic experience, they'll shut them down. He, he said something to that, to that effect, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, I, I, I thought I remembered that too. So that's at least there's that, right? You, you have some uh, security in that, I guess. Yeah. Now, something like weak auras. Um, weak auras, as it is, doesn't really work. It wouldn't really work in classic because one of the big things in classic is uh, if you guys remember mages had detect magic right you can't see the opposing players buffs um, the only way that you could detect if somebody had something is if you had detect magic on them or if you actually saw them cast it uh, I think that's part of the gameplay like you could see their debuffs and whatnot but as far as like their self buffs um, you, you wouldn't have been able to see that. So with in, in current WoW, you can see everything on the opposing player. So Weak Aura sees that, and then boom, here it is. It pops up. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think uh, as long as that just like base functionality works the same way that it used to, something like Weak Aura, I, I don't think would be as big of a deal. Um, I don't know. There's uh, there's all kinds of add-ons right now, like Deadly Boss Mods, whatever. Um big wigs, stuff like that, that whenever a, a boss or somebody uses a certain ability, something pops up on your screen. So there's stuff like that already. Chronometer is another one. Um, what's the CC one? The C, uh, CC watch is one, but what's the one I'm thinking of? Do, Omni, do you know? Omni CC? Is that what you're thinking about? Omni CC, yeah. Um, was Omni CC the vanilla one? Stay safe, do you remember? I think it was Omni I CC. I don't remember, no. Yeah, there was one that I, I can't remember if it was. I, th I think it was Omni CC. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's all kinds of stuff right now that kind of work in, in the similar vein as Weak Horrors, but I think the, the Weak Horrors functionality uh, as it is wouldn't really work with uh, with Vanilla, how Vanilla works. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, we'll have to see. Like, I, I would put a lot of faith in what Ian said about um, if there's something that just like, just totally undermines what how Classic WoW is supposed to be played, I would expect them to shut it down, 100%. And you know, there, there were add-ons in Vanilla WoW and add-ons that maybe even people use on private servers right now that I would argue undermine classic route gameplay. So we'll have, we'll have to see. I mean, it's, and they're going to have to determine that stuff on a very individual basis. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting how that plays out. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick guys, before we, before we continue, we, we still got, we still got plenty of time left. Don't worry. Uh, but if you haven't yet, please, please, please. Uh, it's in the chat right now. I switch point follow. If you haven't yet, please follow Sakar on Twitch. Yeah, this has been streaming on Twitch more recently. Caden, Sakar now. Uh, he's been streaming on Twitch. Please follow him and please follow Stay Safe TV. Follow Tips Out, baby. Tips Out's going to be playing Horde. Stay Safe is going to be playing Alliance. Uh, we're going to have separate guilds. They've both started their guild applications, but we'll be playing on PvP servers. That's our plan. And uh, so, yeah, please go follow them. Twitter, uh, 
YouTube, Twitch, all that stuff. It's right there in the chat. It's, it's just their Twitch, but you can go to their pages and uh, you can go to their pages and you can see all their other links. And, and of course, it's on the screen as well. Um, uh, and also for me, you know, you can follow this channel if yep. you want. Make sure to follow yeah. SFAN TV. Mm -hmm. And invest, you know, twitchstocks.com, invest in SFAN pump TV, it. all pump, no dump. Yeah, just pump it, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> So yeah, no, plenty of that. So yeah, thank you guys for the follows. Really, we really do appreciate that. I mean, the the amount of support you guys have given us since we've started doing this show and uh, the follows for again, stay safe tips, everybody. And and I know Yithisens has gotten or Sakar has gotten plenty of support uh, since you know everything went down a couple weeks ago, which has been really awesome to see. And it just kind of goes to show like how strong the Classic Wild community is and uh, how you guys can like really rally behind somebody that that uh, you really support. So uh, hearts in the chat for you guys for sure, hundred um, percent. Also, pretty soon we're gonna do a Q and A. So if you guys want to tweet at us, you know, at S Fan TV, tips out, baby, stay safe, warlock, hashtag Classicast. Um, we'll answer some tweets. We'll look at Twitter. Uh, we'll also take some questions from chat as well. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to hit on? I, I actually have one question that was already asked that we can uh, that we can get to. If you guys don't have anything else that you guys want to hit on, right? Uh, or if you I'm guys, right, yeah, if, I'm ready for Q and A. You ready? Yeah, yep, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay Billy, ready. Uh, this is from Anime Weed. Uh, he says, "This is a question for everyone. I wanted to know your own personal decisions for content, etc., and what you would do with Classic WoW if Blizzard hired you as the lead director of Classic WoW's development pre-release, during Rive release, and beyond." Wow, that's that's a that's a big question. Um, so that's like two questions, right? Wait, is he, is he yeah. talking about our our streaming slash YouTube content? And then also yeah. what we would do if we were the head of the WoW t the Classic WoW team. So two questions. Yeah, yeah, two questions basically. Okay, okay. Um, um, do you want to start, Stay Safe? Yeah, sure. Like one one thing I'm really looking forward to doing with Classic WoW is, and I did this when I was playing on un <clears throat> undocumented servers, and I, people really <laughs> like this. Um, I, I I think I did two of these videos back in the day. I did sort of like account update videos. So maybe I think once a week with Classic WoW, I want to do like account mm -hmm. update videos and talk about, okay, this is where I'm at on this character. These are my professions. These are my reputations. This is the progress I've made um, since the last video. And I'll talk about all the alts I have. And people really like those. There, I think there's a lot of people that... So I, I'm going to be playing um, Classic WoW at a super, super no life level. Mm -hmm. And I think people are going to want to follow that journey. And they'll be invested in sort of my journey um, even though they can't play it, even though they can't know life to the same extent. So mm -hmm. I'll sort of like try to bring them along. Um, people really liked that when I was doing that on private service. So that's, that's one thing I'm really eager to do. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat as that. Actually, I saw some like old, like I, I didn't play OSRS, but I saw, I saw like some old, old school RuneScape videos where I saw people were doing that. And I thought that was like a really good idea. And, and, People seem to enjoy that, and they seem to be like personally invested in the stream and the progression of your character. Um, like whenever I was streaming, like I remember it was like, oh, like is S fan finally going to get a Bone Reaver's Edge this week? You know, is is I've Soul Fierce going to drop? And people would go, and I remember like when we're doing rag, like my views would spike every week, right? Because people would maybe tune in and out, and like just kind of oh, like where are they this? And all of a sudden, you would have like a fifty hundred viewer spike whenever you're killing Ragnaros because one, people want to see the fight. Uh, they want to see if I would die because I would die almost every week because I'm just Pepe guy, I guess. I don't know. Uh, nobody would heal me. It's their fault. So, <laughs> so um, you can heal yourself. Listen, you're rep out. No, no, no. I, I took. I don't have where it is. I have too many abilities on my hotbar to be able to make room for heals. Okay, as a rep paladin, it's very hard. Just don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, no, like my views would spike because they were like, "Is he gonna get it? Is he gonna drop this week?" So. Yeah, I mean, stuff like that. I think people get, like, genuinely invested. I remember one of the biggest memes on the server was I would just be in MC and people would just link items. Not in my guild, people that I might not even know. And we would be in world chat. And it would be, Gratz s fan Breastplate of Might. I can't even use the item. <laughs> like, I can't even use the thing. Gratz s fan Thunder Fury, Whispers. Did you get it? Did you get it? I remember whenever I first got my Spinal Reaper, like, in my first epic weapon that I actually got... It was like the coolest experience and uh, just seeing how many people on the server were like so excited that 
I, I finally got a rag weapon, right? It wasn't a BRE, but it was a Spinal Reaper. And, like, I remember sitting in Iron Forge. I was on the, the step, and just everybody was coming around, waving at me. People were sending me whispers, congrats, man, super excited for you, all this stuff. And seeing that, like, level of community, like, there's so many memes and stuff that comes out of it where it's like, oh, Gratz S fan just became a meme on the server because it was, like, a rep prio and all this stuff, and I got the Onslaught girdle. Uh, but I, I, I like, kind of look, look back on that, and it was a very fond memory I have of... Uh, how excited people were and like supportive of like oh dude the, the guy like he finally got the weapon so it was it was pretty cool and, and i would like to do a lot of like character update stuff like that and um very similar with my streams like raid streams pvp streams one of one of my things that i used to do and uh one of the things that i would aim for on my old streams was if i'm streaming vanilla wow and i think this is why my channel grew so fast is every stream something was happening, something was being accomplished. There was a goal, and, and that's not really the case with a lot of like retail wild streams right now. It's a, a lot of more like chill, hang out. Um, maybe you might be doing something, maybe you might not be, but it's 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 just like a, having like a good time, right? Whereas, hold on, sorry, I don't know what that happened. Um, whereas on my vanilla streams, it was like, oh, we're doing Paladin Police Force, we're doing. Uh, you know, we're doing back Blackwing Lair, we're doing MC. So yeah, I, I think stuff like that is, uh, is really cool. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of it for me. Tips, you want to go ahead? Um, I mean, I'm going to be making a lot of videos of, uh, me ganking these fine gentlemen surrounding me right here. Uh, um, I'm many, sure many with videos. even numbers, right? Tips. I'm sure Absolutely, with even numbers. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Plenty of one v threes, of course. And uh, yeah. <laughs> continuing the guides uh, that I'm working on right now. Just you know, whatever guides I don't finish before classic, I'll just continue those uh, after classic as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of doing the journey update thing uh, that these gentlemen are talking about. Um, we'll see how how I end up doing it. Uh, it might not be vods. It might be kind of cut it up bits and pieces something along those lines but the reality is once classic launches it's going to be so hard to make videos uh that require a lot of effort so we'll see what mm -hmm. happens but you know they're definitely going to be streaming a lot more than making videos but but we'll see mm -hmm. yeah and i mean you've talked about this a little bit uh sakar uh, like how, how much like you're streaming or like if you, uh, you know, you, you are looking for uh, a job as well. You're trying to kind of find out like the best option for yourself. Uh, what do you foresee happening as far as if you were to be streaming full time or if you were to be working? Uh, so I've pretty much decided that if I go wherever I go to work, I'm probably going to continue streaming. Uh, so I'm probably going to keep up with that just because it's, it's been so fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to kind of continue this. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've seen I've seen what you know what all comes from the, from this kind of thing. Uh, it's it's fun uh, hanging out with you guys and getting to do things like this. Uh, so I want to keep doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. So really, I I plan on just kind of doing like just regular kind of streaming of going through classic and uh, people would get to kind of see me get to experience the content that I never got to experience whenever it was live. Uh, so at least for me, I'm going to be giddy the entire time because I've I. I haven't played any private servers. I haven't actually done any of the content, so I don't. I never got to actually experience any of it. So it'll be my mm -hmm. first time going through a lot of it, uh, at least for dungeon wise. Uh, I think the only dungeon I ever really did in Classic was Dead Mines, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be a whole like a new experience for me, uh, getting to ex to ex to see all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Work wise, uh, who knows where I'm gonna where I'm gonna be at the moment? Uh, but we'll we'll see we'll see yeah. what comes there. There you go. Uh, and then kind of follow up with that. And, and before we take some more questions and again, guys, uh, tweet at us, hashtag classic cast, give us a follow on Twitter. Uh, and, and we'll be looking at, at more questions from Twitter. Um, but also like, uh, kind of to the second part of that question was, uh, if we were, if we were lead director of wow, right? Like what, what direction would we like to take or lead director of like classic wow? Like what direction would we want to take classic in? Uh, do one of you guys want to start or. Uh, I, I'll go ahead and start actually. So for me, like the way I see it, I, I think that, uh, I think that it's on the right path, right? They, they want to go through and they want to release classic. I think that there's certain things that they should, should definitely not be there. Like loot trading should probably definitely not be there. I think that a fair compromise would be to, uh, if they absolutely feel like they have to have loot trading, I think a fair compromise would be that it's only 
active whenever you're in a raid environment and you have master loot selected. But if you're doing group loot or need before greed, round robin, all that stuff, then there's there's no loot trading in that situation. Um, it's it's it, it needs to be scaled back a lot. I don't want to see right click report. Uh, I don't want to see people get muted in chat. That oh, I, I, That's like the most – I actually don't type in trade chat in retail WoW that often because if I type three messages within like 10 or 15 seconds, I don't know what it is, it mutes me and I can't talk anymore. And then by the time that it's unmuted, I'm like, okay, I don't even care to talk. So like that's another thing that I think a lot of people would really – like I would just kill social interaction on the server. So there's, there's like those things that I would take out. But talking about um, – playing or how, how classic is going to play out beyond uh i would really like to see burning crusade i would like to see wrath uh i think that right now that's all that most people will want to see but by the time we finish wrath it's going to be five six years down the road and i don't know there's going to be people at that point that are nostalgic about cataclysm and mop even and whereas i personally am not and i don't think i will be uh i think there's going to be other people that are and I'd be very curious to see how that ends up playing out. But for me personally, I think just like the first three makes the most sense. Oh, you're a pal. Yeah, dance you'd game. Lo- you'd yeah. love Mop. You'd love Mop. You're a pal. I heard, I heard it was pretty good. Yeah, McConnell, McConnell loved it from, from what I understand. Um, sort of piggybacking off of that, uh, I, I, like if I were the director of WoW, honestly, um, was it the, the director of Blizzard or the director of WoW? Just like you were, you're basically lead director of Classic WoW. Lead director of Classic WoW. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, to be honest, and this is you know a lot of credit to the, to the current Classic WoW dev team. Um, I think they're on the right track for about you know for the vast majority of the game. I think again, the only things I would I would probably change is right click to report. Um, I would either remove the feature <laughs> entirely or alter it to to the point where the where the automation doesn't trigger uh, or triggers in far less cases, and um, yeah, loot sharing. I would just, I would just remove that, and then sharding, just remove that, <laughs> and then <laughs> just get rid uh, of it, dude. You just get rid of it, dude. Just get rid. Of it. But, but everything else, everything else, I think is on the right track, and I think that's really, really good. When, when you take into account just how many things they could have changed, and how many small adjustments they could have made, and you compare that to what we got at BlizzCon and the philosophy at BlizzCon, like I'm, I'm pleasantly, I was pleasantly surprised to see that. You know, the team themselves have, have a very good uh, row of heads on their shoulders. And I think it's going to be fine at the end of the day. So more or less what they're doing now with, with some small changes here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I pretty much agree. I, I I genuinely have a lot of faith in the Classic Dev team. I think I really think that they're trying to recreate Classic WoW as authentically as they possibly can. I'm, I am I think they're going to make the right decisions. Um if if I was in charge of one, I guess one change I would make, and I understand, I understand that if classic devs are taking time to, so my change would be more communication. I understand if classic devs are taking time to communicate with us more often, that's less time they have to develop the game, right? I get that. I would find someone super passionate, like um, like Sakar here. Anyone, d- d- just bring him in and sit him behind your chair as you're developing classic wow and you can verbally dictate things to him hey you know let's share this you don't even have to really like take your eyes off the screen as you're developing you can just be like hey let's share this this is a cool thing they might be interested stuff like that you know you can he can spend a couple weeks gathering some stuff and then and then display it to the players i think communication is very very important and i think that's that's one thing that um hightail actually we were talking about hightail earlier hightail is doing so well with developing their their upcoming game every 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 week several blog posts screenshots just just snippets it's not even anything of crazy substance it's just like hey uh we're working and uh here's just like a little tiny thing we've done uh in the last week stuff like that it's so cool and and, and i know for a fact there are so many people that want to be brought brought along for that trip um i think that would be great yeah i think so um I don't know, uh, Caden, do you, uh, actually, you know what, this is, uh, this will actually go well into another question, kind of like, we'll, we'll two-part this for you. What are your thoughts on content behind, beyond Nax? This is from Fellerin. Content beyond Nax, if they didn't just go to TVC, what would you want to see? Like, let's say you were in charge. Like, let's say, let's say there's content beyond Nax. Would you like to see that? Or, uh, would you just want to go straight to TVC? And, and if so, what would you like to see? 
Uh, I would like the choice. So I, I'm, I'm very much a fan of, of giving the, the player choice in this scenario of mm-hmm. say if you go down the TBC route, uh, you have the op- option to copy your character onto, say, the TBC server and start TBC off, but you retain your character and its data mm-hmm. on the classic server. And if you want to kind of try out, say, you know, some new new content that they have, basically, if they're getting into this world of, of classic and remembering what vanilla was like, I would love for the opportunity to kind of see that as well. See it, mm-hmm. one if they could create stuff that would be true to vanilla as much as it could be, or even trying to use the old ideas that they had that they never got to do, uh, and somehow managed to implement them uh, within within vanilla. Seeing if they could take th- those ideas and kind of, in a modern sense, can we pull this off? That kind of thing. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure John Stats kind of talked a lot about some of their ideas from back then that they they had, but they never had the bandwidth to actually do. In this case, right. seeing if they could do that, uh, but it gives you it gives you the choice for both. Uh, yeah. If you want to go to TBC, sweet, you can go, uh, but you're not penalized if you want to also experience this kind of uh, shot in the dark of of new content. Mm-hmm. That's that's something uh, I, I I agree with that too. Like just the concept of being able to like character copy. To, to a Burning Crusade Fresh server, like you can either level from scratch or you can copy a character over. And then you maybe have like like holding servers, stasis servers, and where where they stay on 1.12 forever. Mm-hmm. And basically you can just stay there and play that. And then over time, like sure, that might dwindle and there might be fresh servers that open up. Because it ends up being this big spider web that I could draw out. Um, we're basically like, okay, you have Burning Crusade, you have Classic Fresh, you have the server that's still here, and then you have holding servers. And over time, you know, people, some people just want to play 1.12 forever. Like, there's people that just genuinely did not want Vanilla WoW to end, and they wanted to finish. They wanted to farm Nax. Nax had come out, Burning Crusade was coming out, and they still hadn't even finished AQ40. Like, there, there's still so much time to, or there's still so much content to be done, and not enough time to do it before you basically had the concept of uh, forced progression placed on you. And that's something that, you know, happens in like every MMO or anything that there's like an expansion pack or, or something gets put out. Um, that's something that you have to deal with. But I think having the ability to copy over and then maybe eventually like, you know, these people that just want to play 1.12 forever across like maybe 10, 20 servers, which might be, let's say, 5,000 server cap dwindles down to an average of like, you know, 500 people online all the time then, okay, now we can take these 10 servers and merge them into one under this holding server, which is 1.12 forever. And you have all these communities coming together and these are all people that are about the same thing, just playing 1.12 forever. And you could still level a character there fresh and all kinds of stuff. Um, I think it's kind of confusing to talk about. I might make a video about that where uh, I kind of explain like what I think could happen. Now, I don't know if that's like a good business decision or not. I think it would be, right? You give players the option and, and you have you give people more ways to play the game that they want to play. But... Um, I think these t- these these yeah. discussions we're t- we're not talking like we're talking a hypothetical where business wise it doesn't matter right. it's kind of like what our dream would be and that's kind of where my, my I'm I'm in the same mentality where uh, that's why I said it'd be cool to have the opportunity to copy a character to say if TBC does exist you copy that character to TBC but you still maintain your classic character which allows mm-hmm. you if you want to still do that you can keep doing that forever it's still there uh, you're not penalized just for going to new content that. Or the the next level of content it's not new but it's the next content mm-hmm. this is a uh this is another question from us uh, from tribe he says um what what are your personal thoughts on progressive itemization it is a beast of a topic that doesn't have an easy <laughs> answer <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a complicated one uh i've mm-hmm. read a ton of reddit posts a bunch of forum posts uh, where it kind of examines the different phases of, say, uh, sort of items depending on the patch. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's it's complicated. I wish I I wish I even had a uh, an opinion on where it should fall. Uh, right. Because what's what's weird is you're going to be in scenarios where, say, if it runs with the one twelve version of items that say are very strong, way stronger than say like the one five, but you're, the content you're doing is even before one five. It, it feels mm-hmm. weird to do to do things with gear that's stronger later on than uh, it was whenever you were actually doing it. It's current. Um, mm-hmm. I honestly don't know what to do about that. That's that's a complicated question, say team wise. <clears throat> I would love for them to figure out a way where 
uh, progressive itemization is say say snapshotted to the time frame of the content that you're experiencing. That mm-hmm. may not be easily easily achievable because then you're going to have to work with multiple versions of items. Say if you yeah. know, uh, say if the first you know way a first you know set of the four content waves that they're talking about. Say if uh, items don't the items versions are whatever they were before. I don't know. Say one four you're going to have to deal with those versions. And then say, we go to the next one when it's like, all right, let's everything between four and one six. We run with those versions. It's complicated. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of work being added onto it. And I don't think the team has an easy solution on this one. And they're probably stressed figuring out how to solve that. Uh, they could go with one twelve and just call it a day, but mm-hmm. it doesn't feel good to do that content with gear that got buffed. And so you're now you're stronger than what that content actually was intended for you to be at. Uh, it yeah. kind of takes it kind of takes a little bit away, and it really makes it to where the only real content that you're experiencing at its current difficulty would have been Naxxramas, and it's going to take you forever to get to that point. Uh, it's going to trivialize a lot of the content beforehand. Right. Yeah, I I, think... I, I I don't think it's possible to have true 100% vanilla WoW authentic progressive itemization. I mean, there there were mm-hmm. items that changed, not even with with big patches. They just changed on a random Tuesday. It was like a hot fix kind of deal. There were right. so many item changes just randomly there. You guys don't even like, I don't know about them. You don't know about them. They're just lost to time. I don't even know if, if mm-hmm. the classic devs know about them. Just so many stupid little things changed. It's impossible to recreate down that to down, down to a T. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I think you have to find a middle ground because I don't think running off 1.12 is the right answer for the reasons that you just said it trivializes content. It's, I don't think that's the right solution either. I think a really good middle ground is let's say they end up having um, six content phases. I would hope that they that each one of those would also be an itemization phase. So kind of like you were saying, you know, six content phases, each time the content phases, there's also an itemization phase. And uh, maybe even before each new content slash itemization phase, you know, the weeks leading up to that, they release a list. Okay, in three weeks when the new content slash itemization phase happens, this is a list of every item that's going to change and how it's going to change. I would love that. That's, that's I think, mm-hmm. a pretty good middle ground. I think that progressive itemization has several parts to it, right? There's uh, when items are put into the game, when items are changed, and also when items are taken out of the end. There's some stuff that gets that gets taken out, right? Um, I think that the most important thing that needs to be addressed is when items get put into the game. Uh, even even on private servers, like there hasn't been 100% perfect progressive itemization or... Um, like let's say Nost, for example, right? Nostalrius released the tier two gear in Blackwing Layer with like the 1.9 reworks. It was it was basically like the the newest version of the gear uh, in the 1.6 patch, whereas it should have been put in the 1.9 patch. I think that's less of a problem than let's say Titanic leggings being put in the game from the very beginning, right? Uh, than other items that are really good being put in place from the beginning onslaught girdle being in at launch right the the flame guard gauntlet stuff like that quick strike ring um i think progressive itemization should be looked at in two separate kind of two kind of, at least two separate facets right whereas like okay well these things change and if you're looking at different versions of items maybe that's something that's going to be a little bit harder and like a separate like project to tackle but as far as like when the items are actually physically put into the game put into the loot tables i think that absolutely needs to be done properly yeah, so that's 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 kind of what I think. Um, I, I think most people would agree there needs to be a progressive itemization to some extent. Like the argument is to what extent, right? What's the frequency? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we're all pretty much like on the same phase or, or same uh, same page. I mean, <laughs> hopefully there are multiple yeah, phases. Yeah. Multiple yeah, phases. Yeah, same yeah page. more phases. <laughs> more phases. One page. Yeah. Wait, no exactly. phasing. No phasing. We don't want no phasing. Right. Yeah, no, no phasing. phasing. No phasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's why i wanted to make sure to clarify that. that's a complicated <laughs> thing to solve and i hope everyone realizes that's a complicated scenario mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like how do you how it do is you, very complicated how do you mm-hmm. deal with this that's a lot of data a lot of items a lot of different versions of items how do you even yeah. remotely tackle that i mean may, maybe this is something you can speak about so they've said they have a running version of uh 1.12 right yeah they have I a don't... reference client that they that they're they compare stuff to okay right um I don't know. Maybe you know. Do they do they even have like databases of 1.12 items and 1.3 items and 1.4? I- do they even have this information? I honestly don't know. Uh, I, okay. I'm sure that's got to be documented somewhere. They have it in some sort of data somewhere. Uh, yeah. But I, I honestly have no idea. 
from the, from what I was told, like the way they updated the game was that they uh, they basically once everything like new version came out, they didn't really archive a lot of the very early builds of WoW. Um, right. That's why it ran into the problem of how do you do classic, uh, and they happened to like. From my understanding, was this, this could be wrong. I could be totally like sharing something that someone made up and told me, but they actually had found uh, an right. old version that allowed them to actually have a reference client and do this. Um, right. So they happened to just have, find like a hard drive that had the data. They like it kind of that that kind of scenario where it's like, oh, this actually exists. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. Uh, I, I don't know if they have any of that any of that old data, but I think if they had it, they probably they're probably going to figure out ways to use it or leverage that data to accomplish some of that stuff. But I, it's it's one of those weird things that's going to make it it's going to make it feel weird, because um, like you're saying, even even private servers don't get I, uh, progressive progressive itemization. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, what what private servers have to do? They have to find old like Alakazam or Thoughtbot old uh, web archives. Yeah. And they have to find it for the appropriate time. And so it's sort of just like stitching together all of this stuff. And of course, things get left out that they can't find. There's there's no just database of all of it. It's mm-hmm. just man hours trying to find these old uh, web archives. So, you know, I, I, I guess that I would hope that the classic dev team does have that information. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, for sure. I think I, I think all that's really important. Um this is, a, this is a good question. Actually, this question really leads into something else that would it would be good, it would be a good time to talk about this. Uh, this is from Rag, Rag Shots. He's kind of talking about. Um, I think he's talking about maybe he's talking about basically. You guys have released your guild applications. Stay safe and tips have released their guild applications. I'm going to be releasing mine a little bit later, and uh, I, I'm probably going to get on that relatively soon. Uh, once I kind of get some some stuff figured out with some of my officers and whatnot, but um, he's talking about you know maybe some some planned guild fighting and you know Hillsbrad or something like that, some some like little battles and stuff like that. We've actually talked about a lot of different events that we want to put on, maybe like classic cast related events and uh, whether it's like dueling tournaments or uh, all kinds of stuff. We'll get into it more later because it's it's been a lot of just like hey like let's let's write this idea down, let's do this or let's do yeah. that, but. I think our server is going to be a lot of fun to play on. There's there's going to be events and stuff that we're doing all the time, uh, both personally and, and as part of Classic Cast together. I think it'll be really cool to do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, hopefully, Tips won't be on a different shard like he is now. But uh, <laughs> but no, it, it should it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it should be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah. yeah, definitely definitely something that that we could see. Yeah, absolutely. When you think of Vanilla WoW, you think of like giant. I I mean, I think of like uh, obviously. <laughs> Not not the sinister, but I think of uh, the the funeral ganking. I think of the forty paladins versus forty shamans. I think of like these mm-hmm. crazy player events, and uh, we want to have dual tournaments and Gurubashi Arena tournaments and all that stuff. I think is that's that's all planned. Absolutely, it's going to be really badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think one of the big things, uh, one of the one of the big concerns that you know has come up for us is like the the potential of like griefing and whatnot um not having like a ptr i think i think having a classic ptr would be like really really good if if blizzard would go through and uh be able to actually like set something like that up for us in order to be like doing do like dueling tournaments and stuff like that yeah uh, i think would be really really cool um but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes i mean if not like we'll uh we'll, we'll have a lot of fun on our server that's for sure um hmm let me see here I like this one. What part of Classic WoW? I like this one for you, Caden. A question for all of you. Uh, what part of Classic WoW are you most excited about that is different from the current retail game? Uh, this is from Wellsiak on Twitter. And and we'll start taking some questions from chat as well, too. Um, let's start with you. What is what is the thing that you're most excited about as far as, like... I know, I know you talked about, like, you know, going through and, like, doing some of the Blackrock dungeons, right? Uh mm-hmm. As far as like mechanically and certain things that you want to see, what is something that's really exciting for you, um, as opposed to the retail game? Uh, I'm excited about two things. Two things in particular. Uh, one is the old talents, uh, okay. because I feel like I've gone long enough without those. I I do like the new talent system. Don't get me wrong. Um, I talk about that a lot. Where it's like, no, no. There's actually the new talent system is is good for the current version of the game. 
but the old talents in the old version of the game, you have to have those old talents because the new talents right. would not they would not work. So I'm excited right. about getting to play with the old talent trees again. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, attunements. I mm. miss a I love doing all the TBC attunements. That is like a huge thing I think is missing from WoW. Like I know it's annoying. I know it's frustrating to get people attuned up, but it was such a guild like camaraderie thing where you yeah. helped people get attuned and you were doing it as a group. Like uh, I love, I love that. I want, I want to have something like attunements again. And so I'm looking forward to uh, running with like a group of people and getting everyone attuned and like helping every all the rest of the guildies, like, yeah. you know, get the right attunements to go into say molten core, going into any dungeons. Like I'm, I, I want that really bad. Getting the yeah. keys, like oh, the old key ring, getting everything. I, I want that. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Say, say, do you want to go? Yeah. I mean, I know this is like such a stupid thing, but I'm just like, the game was an adventure. Everything you did was an adventure. Mm-hmm from getting world buffs to leveling to helping your friends out to it was it was all about the community and the adventure i mean there's there's gonna be times when you think okay i need to go farm some gold and uh you're gonna be running to your gold farming spot you'll get in a world pvp fight you're gonna get distracted you'll be world pvping for three hours because you know you'll be there you'll call some friends in horde people will call there it's just like there you know ne- the game is just such a crazy adventure and that's what i'm looking mm-hmm. forward to the most yeah i think uh i I totally agree with both you guys. Um, one of the big things this is kind of like a story I thought about, you know, when you're talking about attunements and stuff. Uh, we had one of the tanks in my guild, Prot Warrior, uh, named JD. This was on my private server stuff on the YouTube videos uh, or my old YouTube streams. JD was, I think at the time, he might have been like the third tank in our guild, right? We, we had like four tanks and he was, he was tank number three. And he was a good player, right? It was just, we just had like different guys. And we had just, we, we'd been kind of funneling JD some gear and, and trying to build him up. And he, he watches the stream from time to time. Yeah, JD and Black Panties. Yeah, dude, I, I miss those guys, man. But uh, basically what had happened was we knew that there was going to come a point in time where like JD's a good player. We, we need to prop him up and we need to build him up to uh, be able to take over the role as like, uh, main defensive tank, which is what ended up happening, and Black Panties was our was our TPS tank. So I remember JD. I think it was like Breastplate of Might, and uh, he he was like, "Yeah, like I don't know, like what I should get here, and you know what I should do here." So I remember spending like a whole day with him, like eight, nine, ten hours off stream, and we were just like going all around the world. We were getting him Librams. We were doing Dire Maul. We went to the 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 Burning Steps and. We did all this stuff. We farmed some stuff for him. I gave him some gold out of the guild bank to be able to get him some enchants. We got him plus four. Like, I remember he wanted to get plus three stats on his chest. And I was like, dude, you're going to have this chest for, like, at least five months. Just, like, I'll, I'll help you out. We'll, we'll, we'll get you the mats for plus four stats. I know it's more expensive. Here you go. Boom. Like... I know it's something as little as like one more to like strength, stamina, agility, whatever. But it's like if you're going to have something for that long, you know, you might as well do it the best, right? Best of the standard. Right. So, so you know, we ended up doing all that and it, it was just a good time, man. And, and just kind of building that community and your guild is like your family. This is kind of what I wanted to lead into. Having a guild, and don't get me wrong, Indestructible. Indestructible is a great guild. Dragon Saber is awesome. Like he's he's such a cool dude. Getting to meet him at BlizzCon and stuff. Like they're great guys. Um, but whenever it was like my guild on my private server, like this was genuinely like my family. And I remember like whenever the the guild ended up eventually disbanding, like I was so just I, I was like upset. Like I was physically worn out. I was I was emotional about it because I I didn't want twofold. I feel like. My guild disbanded for a number of reasons, right? Classic was announced and a lot of people kind of lost it. My stream got banned, so it was hard to recruit. I I, I felt like, you know, I was kind of like losing my friends, right? Because a lot of people, they weren't just guild disbands, we're done. They were like, we're quitting the game. Like, I don't want to play with anybody else. Yeah. And then on the other side of things, like, I kind of felt like I had failed a lot of people too. Like, and I know like it was happenstance, right? Where you're... You know, the the classic comes out and people are just like, look, I got real life. I want to do other stuff before doing it for real and classic. And uh, just like having that 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 feeling like it just sucked, man. And I still talk to some of those guys whenever I get a chance, like they message and they watch from time to time. Um, and, you know, sure, I'm not going to be able to play with everybody in classic. But uh, I don't know, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to is getting able to reconnect with people, uh, both that I played with on private servers and retail. Wow. I think that's going to be really, really special. 
Tips, what was, are you looking forward to most about Classic WoW? Oh, uh, um, the lack of sharding. Uh, but no, no, for real. Um, <laughs> just like you guys said, the community, uh, playing with people, seeing people like constantly, repetitively over and over again, uh, running to people that you, you know, that you saw, meeting new people, just the community side of things, you know, like, you know, we, we joke around about like the, the ganking and stuff like that, just having rivalries back and forth, Alliance Horde, um, all the stuff that, that doesn't really exist, not just in retail, but really in any MMO today. Uh, all of that stuff that, that we experienced back in the day and some, just all of that coming back is, is what gets me excited. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. It's all about the community. I mean, classic WoW gameplay is good. It's really good. But I really think, um, and I love it, like, like leveling in vanilla WoW, leveling is my most favorite piece of WoW content ever. In any expansion, more than raiding, or it's my favorite thing to do ever. But still, that being said, the strongest selling point about classic WoW is the degree to which it incentivizes, fosters, encourages, necessitates teamwork, communication, camaraderie grouping making friendships stuff like that and not just friendships but rivalries um that's 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 what goes on man it's good it's great mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can't wait to, to to get the reputation and also hate uh the other faction uh and knowing names of people on the other faction on the other side of the server like that was one of the funnest parts about mm -hmm. yeah. tc or, or wrath for me it was uh seeing someone like in a battleground or seeing say someone in like it was uh, like a winter grass for example and being like oh shit that's that's so and so uh run away uh like uh, yep. there was a, a multi-rank one glad that we used to used to be in our battle group by the name of viral uh, he used to be a, a big rogue uh and it was kind of like you you feared him he would just <laughs> he would rock you he would he, he would five be one he would only one be five people all the time it was very common that he would just roll over people. If anyone from like the Ruin Battle Group, you probably know who I'm talking about. Yeah, someone's that I know viral. Yeah, he used to be like feared, and if you got him in like a BG, you you would run away from him because you knew he would win, no matter what. You couldn't do anything about it. Like you were just gonna lose. And I want, yeah. I want, I want that again. I miss that server community kind of thing where you knew who you knew who everybody was, and it was kind of a, a tighter knit community. Uh, and even on the Horde side, you were intimately familiar with who these other people are because there was this mysterious kind of name to them, but you just knew the name would come would come murder you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always thought it was something that was cool. Like, uh, I remember one of the... This is kind of like an off story, and this was... It's happened in Burning Crusade, and this is one of the times that like I was like, oh, I made it. Like, that's that's how I felt. Like, I felt like I made it. I I was pretty good at ret. Like I knew how to play my class. I didn't. I, I wasn't a hardcore raider. I was. I would guild hop and I was kind of social. Whatever. I was in middle school, um, but I hit my stride in Burning Crusade, and that's whenever I peaked. I remember somebody put in a guild application for uh, somebody who had put in a guild application for playing a ret paladin, and uh, it was a guild application to a guild called Aftermath on Kelthuzad. And this paladin put in an application, talked about all this stuff, and okay, this, this, this. And one of my friends messages me, and he's like, dude, you got to check out this forum post on the Aftermath forums. And I'm like, okay. So I look at the post, and he's like, go down to post number seven. Scroll down to post number seven. And basically, I look through it, and this guy's applying, talking about all this stuff, and these people are like, okay, dude, whatever. Post number seven is like, hey, man, look, I'm sure rep paladins are great and all. They're, you know, you can bring one to a raid. Like, we get that. But like you're just not ready. Like is what he said. Like you're just not you're you're just not up to snuff for like what we're looking for in our guild. He said, come back whenever you're on the same page as like Burnout, which is a guy who was like totally stacked. Uh a totally stacked player. I think he was in high caliber in Vanilla WoW. Uh and he, he was a ret paladin. Well, he's a holy paladin, but he got a bunch of ret gear. And he said, Burnout, who that was a guy who I was like, man, I wish I had burnout's gear. I always thought that. And then he said somebody else, and then he said, or S fanned. And I was like, dude. Like, it, it was, like, such a moment of pride for me because I knew, like, Aftermath, High Caliber, like, some of these guilds, like, these are, like, hardcore, like, big-time guilds. And then the fact that somebody mentioned me, like, one of their officers mentioned me as, like, come back when you're, like, s fan. I was like, dude, I, I don't know. I just felt so good about that. I still think back on it, and it just it's such a nice feeling. Um, yeah, that was nice. I don't know. I just wanted to say that because that uh, was nice. Very nice. I was happy. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Wow. Yeah, let's let's take some questions from the chat actually uh, before we go. Uh, we talked. We took some questions from Twitter, guys. Again, please, 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 if you haven't uh, if you haven't followed us yet, uh, Stay Safe TV tips out baby Sakar, our guest, uh, Caden House, former CM Yithisins, uh, who's got plenty of stories I'm sure about Blizzard. I mean, he'll he'll tell you guys I'm sure on his own stream about whenever he uh, deleted Dalaran. Uh, so yeah, that was a, that was a really good one. I thought. Uh, and again, follow Stay Safe, follow Tips, YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff. It's all on the screen. It's in the chat. Follow Please us, go man. follow them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and follow me too if you like. Uh, yeah. My YouTube channel as well. I, I think I'm going to start doing some more YouTube content again. I, I kind of come and go with my YouTube content, but uh, I, I recently got a join button on YouTube, and uh, I feel like there's a level of responsibility that comes with that, so I probably should start making some more YouTube, button, or, uh, YouTube videos. And uh, yeah, so we should be doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if Vanilla WoW is successful, do you think it will shift development philosophies of Retail WoW? This is from Raphael the Raven. Hmm. I think that's a good question. Um, I think that there's stuff to be learned from the success of Vanilla WoW because if something works in Vanilla like, WoW, people seem to really like this, it might somehow, it, it might affect the game positively. Uh, to say like, okay, well, like this works in classic. Like maybe we can make something like this work a little bit more like this in retail. I also think that they're two different games and that you have the opportunity to really reach two different markets of people with these two different games. And sure, you're going to have some overlap, but there's going to be people who like retail the way it is. There's people who like LFR. They're crazy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, there's people who like LFR. There's people who, who like stuff like that. Um, and that's fine, right? That's for them. But there's people who like classic and they don't like classic and that's fine. Like it's just people have their own preferences, you know? Um, I don't know. I, I think that it, you could see like some, some positive impact from the success of classic on retail, but I also think that they, they are probably, and they probably should, uh, keep the two games separate, uh, for the most part. Yeah, I, I think definitely. And of course, this is just my speculation from the outside. I think they're trying to appeal to two completely different demographics. You know, there's going to be crossover, but I think they're they're trying to appease two different demographics. Um, mm. I, I don't know how much, how, how many, yeah, I, I, I don't know if they're going to take like developmental crossover from classic back into retail or vice versa, hopefully not vice versa. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, w I, I wouldn't expect that. What do you think, Tips? Um, no, absolutely. Agree, Andy, 100%. Agreeing, Andy. There we go. There we go. I completely agree. Squad W. There you go. So, so Sakar, from your experience or from from your perspective, could you see the effectiveness, like something being effective in classic, potentially having an influence on retail? Wow. Uh, I think it's reasonably to kind of assume that. Uh, okay. It's, re it's reasonable to assume that because if you're gonna have, it's it's natural to think that if say a developer is. Uh, sucked into something say like for example classic uh you might kind of see some ideas kind of kick off where they could kind of bring maybe a little bit of that, of that to, to retail uh it could be a world where they where you know they go back and they experience something again they're like yeah this was really fun like this would be this would be good to to, to do this again or to do something along those lines or what if we could do this but do it better um uh, and kind of do like a modern spin on say something like attunements for example we could you know if okay. devs are experiencing that again it's like oh this is really fun we could bring this back uh there's old talents that they could experience again and they're like oh maybe we should figure out a way to uh, do a modern version of this uh and it mm -hmm. and it influences the ideas of say 90 or 10 if we you know if that it well, keeps going along those lines um i could see it happen i don't see any reason why it wouldn't um I think it's very reasonable to assume there will be a separation very clearly between retail and classic. But once everyone is in classic and experiencing classic, I think we could see things come over from classic potentially. No idea, but right. it, could it, could, it could happen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stacey, did you see a question that you liked? or? Oh, no. I just think uh, we're getting down to the end here. Okay, yeah, let's yeah, we're we're gonna take just a few more questions, guys. Um, again, uh, at the end of the stream, what we're gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna be hosting Stay Safe, so you guys can hang around. You guys can go to his channel and watch that. We, we're still gonna take a few more questions uh, here from Twitch chat, and uh, 
yeah, uh, basically after after the stream, I, I won't be streaming tonight, and Stacey will be streaming. I may stream super late, uh, possibly after Stay Safe streams, but uh, but we're gonna host Stay Safe, and yeah, yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna have a good time. It's gonna be great. Um, we're gonna pump. Yeah, dude, just pump, pump dude, just pump it, dude. <laughs> all pump, no dump, dude. That's what it's all about. Um, so let's see. This is a good one. This is from Parley. Would you be in favor of battle groups straight from the start, or would you think because of higher server populations, they will only be needed to imp be needed to be implemented when the populations dwindle down? Um, I'll go ahead and start on this one. So we don't know exactly what the server pop is going to be. We're assuming that it's going to be higher. Um, the biggest issue I think with battle groups and uh, with battle groups with PvP in general. It's not about the number, the population cap number. It's about the ratio of alliance to horde and how many people are queuing, right? It's not about the raw number. It's about the, the ratios, the percentages. Uh, so that's something to consider. I personally do not like battle groups. I know it was vanilla. I know it was patch 1.12. Uh, but Stay Safe brought a really good point. This is like Classic Cast 3 or 4. This was really early on that we talked about this. Stay safe put out a really good point. He said, look, like, yeah, obviously it's not perfect. That's not something that we like, but it might end up being eventually might end up being something that is a necessary evil down the road. But hopefully they don't need to do it. And hopefully it's not there from the start. Um, do you still kind of share that sentiment? Stay safe. I share that sentiment. Um, and obviously, you know, for Burning Crusade and leading into Burning Crusade, you need to have battle groups if, if they choose to do classic TV. Right. That's um, true. I really, I really like don't like battle groups in the majority of vanilla WoW though. You know, it's a, it's a sort mm -hmm. of like last ditch thing if, if servers are just totally imbalanced. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, there's there's something so cool about you know you're, you're level 27, you see a, a horde player and you kill each other a couple times and you move on and then you see him at level 43, you kill each other. You're, you guys you remember each other's names, you kill each other. Finally, you're level 60, you kill battleground. You see that same guy, you're like, oh, it's that guy, dude. I hate that guy. We, dude, that guy camped me in Stranglethorn Vale for three hours. One. So there's that familiarity you have with players and you lose that. You lose that um, with battleground with battle groups. I, I really like that that familiarity and. and you know, it, it is, it's not just Horde players, you, you, you know, okay, you queue into a random battle, battleground and you say, oh, you know, I did a dungeon with this guy. Oh, this guy is from a guild that I know is good on my server. Oh, so there there can be a thing, uh, there, there can be community in battlegrounds when there's not battle groups. And I, I, I prefer that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I say so battle groups, they solve the problem. Um, and I do think they were necessary at some point in vanilla. But so long as that problem doesn't exist in the early stages of Classic WoW, and hopefully it won't exist, um, I see no reason to rush them. Mm -hmm. They will need them at some point. It's it's a certainty. Like imba imbalance will happen, faction imbalance will happen, uh, server populations will dwindle. You are going to need battle groups at some point. It was vanilla. It's fine, but why rush it uh, if you don't need to? Right. I think. Um... <sighs> I think there's some things that are cool about battle groups, and it worked in Burning Crusade, kind of like Stay Safe said, uh, where you know you get into the higher end arena, you just need more players at the higher end in order to be able to compete with one another. Uh, for people who don't know who what battle groups are, because battle groups are actually that that's that's old technology, it's like an old old thing at this point. Uh, battle groups were the first semblance of like cross server gameplay, cross realm gameplay, and. Uh, how it worked is they went and they took a bunch of servers at the end of vanilla and they said, this server has like high alliance cap or high alliance pop and low horde pop. This server has high horde, low alliance. And they went and they matched a bunch of servers together and uh, there were like some more, more notorious than other battle groups just for happening to have like, you know, better competition in, in Burning Crusade and whatnot. Like uh, I think it was BG9 with Tychondrius and Nightfall Battle Group was pretty good with uh, those Kel'Thuzad and all that. Rune, but, was, um, Rune was a good one as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, people would so transfer yeah. to battle groups that had lower ratings so they could have a better chance at getting like rank one titles. Yeah. yeah. That, I remember that being a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So people would, because before rank one was actually rank one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Like it was actually the top ranked guy. Like if you were like Merciless Gladiator, like you were the number one ranked team on the entire battle group. And there was like I I don't remember ten battle groups or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. It was twelve or something. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, so there would only be like ten or twelve 
or whatever number rank one players or rank one teams with however many players on them. Um, so yeah, that's what battle groups are is basically clusters, server clusters. Um, one thing that was cool about battle groups, and this is something that I just kind of thought of is it did eventually expand as there were less players in the higher ratings in arenas that you started to notice players more like from other servers. Oh, this is this guy from that server. Who knows with streaming and just the overall, like the, the increased level of like connectivity. Um, if they end up putting battle groups in late vanilla, that could end up actually being like a, a, a point of hype. Like that could be something fun. Like let's say you're playing a game and then, you know, whatever streamer, like you, you go yeah. into a battleground and then all of a sudden you're, you're playing against like, Oh, that's Bajira and he plays on a different server and I'm playing against Bajira now or, True. you know, whoever. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. But I think for it to be hype, it has to come in later. Like I think with battle, I agree. Groups, yeah. It can't be in from the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah, you, can't. you need to be like reactive rather than proactive with trying to solve that problem. They shouldn't be there from the start. Um, let's see. Uh, is there any more questions from you guys before we, oh, oh, this is a good point from Druins. While it was absolutely, I absolutely understand not wanting it coming from someone who was on a very low pop realm with about an 80, 20 split. It was necessary. Yeah. And, and that's, that's basically how it might end up happening eventually. Uh, do I think that classic wow is good for people who have never played before? This is from J4 mess. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And this is this is a whole like can of worms, but a lot of people associate classic WoW, classic World of Warcraft, with hardcore gameplay. Uh, it's it's oh like this game was like super difficult. Retail WoW is easy and all this stuff. I think a lot of that stuff is some some kind of crap. Uh, yeah. I think retail WoW is much more mechanically demanding than vanilla WoW is. I think a lot of the difficulty of vanilla WoW comes from knowledge and preparation, uh, and you also are heavily awarded for time investment True. in vanilla WoW. Yeah. So I think kind of you want you want to continue on that? Well, I was going to say I th I think Vanilla WoW does a really really go good job, maybe the best job of any iteration of WoW of catering to really every demographic of player. If you can only play 2 hours a day after you get home from work, you know, you're a normal human functioning adult, you have responsibilities. Um what you can accomplish in that time frame still is very rewarding. If you're a no life shut and you can play 18 hours a day, what you would accomplish in that time frame is also very rewarding. I think the game is fun for every demographic. That's I think so I too. Yeah, it's it's much more casual friendly than people give it credit for. I like you know I, I played Dark Age of Camelot. I know people who played EverQuest. I know people who played you know Ashron's Fall and Shadowbane and it, all, all kinds of other games before before WoW came out. And WoW was considered a joke. Oh, it's like this Care Bear game. Like, this yeah. game is going to be too easy. Like, well, I was remember... The, was the casual game. I mean, it was the yeah. first MMO that didn't have an XP penalty when you died. And yes, was like... I was literally going to say that. Yeah. yeah, I was literally going to say that. I remember that being a joke. Like, people thought it was so funny that you didn't lose XP when you died. But nowadays, like, people would think that's insane. Yeah. You know? And, and WoW was the... I, I always say WoW was kind of the first MMO in the new generation of MMOs where it kind of takes a lot of these old school principles and packages them in a way that still works. Uh, the graphics aren't so bad that like you can't bear playing it. Um, the, the, the mechanics, the game is smooth. Everything runs well. I remember like you could go across the entire map and you wouldn't have to hit a load screen. Like you hit, like in Dark Age of Camelot, you would hit zone walls and you hit the zone wall and what would happen is you would freeze for like 10, 15 seconds and then you would load the rest of the zone. Um, so yeah, just like stuff like that. That's, you know, like I said, first MMO in the new generation of MMOs where they implemented all this stuff that's it's like, what, like, why is that even a big deal on top of having some of the old school principles, which made it so good. Um, I, 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 I think Vanilla is amazing, obviously. And, uh, I think that anybody can play it. I think anybody can play Vanilla WoW. Yeah. I, I'm in the same boat where I kind of laugh when people say that, uh, Vanilla WoW was like the hardest version of the game ever. It's not, uh, there's mm -hmm. no way, no way it ever was. Uh, it was just a time sink. Uh, most bosses had like two mechanics maybe three mechanics like but when you look when you look at say like uh some of the new fights like mythic jaina for example mythic jaina has more abilities in one phase than some entire tiers did yeah like dude, it's insane it's insane the level of skill that it takes nowadays it's a totally different beast it doesn't detract 
from classic at all or say it's yeah. any less of an experience or any less rewarding i honestly think classic is still more rewarding than the current version of the game even though the current version of the game is way way harder you're mm. just you're getting more viable rewards and it feels more engaging to actually play the game uh in classic just you know with who you're playing it with uh mm-hmm. yeah I, I think there's a very big difference between the two but the the modern game i still think is 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 hard is harder <laughs> but it still you know you know you know what i mean you you yeah, yeah, yeah. most everyone it, it, pretty much difficulty play. difficulty doesn't always equate to uh a sense of satisfaction whenever you complete it right exactly. and i mean there's people difficulty who can help when they, when they killed mythic jaina they just uninstalled wow because they were like i'm done <laughs> yeah dude oh. i was there like i, I was literally there <laughs> yeah. pog so no he, i i yeah he just uninstalled immediately he's like i'm not playing this game anymore and quit yeah. the kills he's like oh, yeah God. Yeah, he literally quit the game. He he had been wanting to quit WoW for a while, but he said he he didn't want to quit because uh, he 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 didn't want to basically bail on the raid tier, right? So he wanted to go and he wanted to do the raid tier, do Jaina, and he just right there, boom, uninstalled the game. I'm out. I'm done. Uh, which is crazy, right? It's it's cool, but um, you know, both from like a team perspective or guild perspective, and and also like it's just like, look, I, I got to finish. So. Uh, I remember being there at the World First Race and just everything that was going on with, like, Mythic Jaina and just the, the countless hours. Well, I think they went uh, upwards of, like, f- was it 400 attempts? Yeah. It was some, it was, it was some insane number. I can't – I should know, but I, I, but was, I, I can't remember. I think it was, like, 380, 380 attempts or something something along those lines. Yeah, so it was it was, it was something yeah. something insane. Um, I but think then the they went was, like, what, for 14, 15 hours straight? Yeah, I think that was the the day before they killed it. I think, um, but yeah, that was nuts. I mean, that, that was a, that was an incredible experience getting to go there and be a part of that at Red Bull and all that. But um, it was so cool just to to see like uh, them do their thing, and and it was great and and great accomplishments and all that. But uh, it's just different in classic. It's just different. Uh, that's that's the best way that I can put it. Absolutely. I would I would say that for the 346 person, attempts that's what it was okay yeah I would say for the person that's asking if, if classic if, if go back to the original question if classic wow is good for new people who've never experienced classic uh, I, I would say I would say yes but if you were interested in the game or if you had someone who was interested in the game it doesn't hurt to kind of show them the current version uh, just because the classic is a different beast in itself but it's still the heart the heart and soul is still there of what it actually is. Uh, I would mm-hmm. I wouldn't have any objection to starting someone off in classic at all. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. a great way to kind of if you're curious as to how a classic looks like from a gameplay perspective, uh, we actually have a friend of ours who, who's in the chat right now. His name is Joanna. He <laughs> he, uh, he frequently plays his leveling his entire leveling world uh, record that he set back in vanilla uh, on his stream. And actually, kid, and this is totally off topic, but I got to help this brother out because honestly, Joanna does so much for the community. His guides have helped thousands upon thousands of people out there get to, to level 60. Um, recently, Joanna received a DMCA strike on his uh, on his account. <laughs> he was streaming his original Vanilla WoW uh, uh, leveling from back in the day. And I guess it might have been mistaken for private server footage or something along those lines. He he doesn't know what he's supposed to do now. Do you know where he can seek recourse for this or anything like that? Um, uh, I've I've talked to him a little bit. I've been I, I've been trying to look in to see kind of what is because I'm pretty sure I was I was probably the one that submitted it, but I don't I don't remember the the footage or like the gameplay. It's it's something I'm trying to look into to see if there's any way to any way to fix that or, or handle it. I wish I could say uh, I. I, it can, something can be done. I'm just not a part of the team now that makes that decision or is in, involved in that process. Yeah. Uh, well, because uh, there's like a whole process. Because yeah. I remember whenever we talked about this before, there's like a whole process that goes down, and then it's like then there's like the contact on it where it's like, okay, here you go, and then you're yeah. like, okay, that's my job. Yeah, yeah that's exactly so, kind of which is like big suck mode. I know, like, dude, you told me whenever you DM'd me, you were like, yeah, I had to watch a bunch of your videos, and I actually like liked a whole ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sucked because yeah. like they made they made you do it and I was like yeah it's just how it goes yeah I think so, I remember one of the things I mentioned was like I don't I was like this is my first time experiencing your content I was like Paladin Police Force is the shit but I'm sorry I'm so sorry yeah yeah no I know I know it's not it's not personal and yeah. like it's it's like a whole like there's a chain of com- like chain of command and all that stuff that goes on yeah uh, I'm and, looking like, into, legal the, stuff. The, into the Joanna thing when I, when I can uh I, I wish I had a concrete answer of what would happen along the lines of that. Uh, you know, if 
if what Joanna had told me was happening, I don't see any problem with with that, like playing that footage. I don't see any problem at all with it. But I don't, I can't make that call anymore. That's not my. That's that's not me. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to yeah. figure. I have to kind of raise the flag and be like, "Can you please look at this and make a decision?" <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I wish I could say one way or, or another, but uh, it's, I promise it's being looked into. I'm trying to. Uh, just time. Uh, of course. Right. Thanks, thanks Kaden. No, we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I can I can talk to my partner manager too, maybe, and see if he can like help. Like, dude, maybe just because the fact that we talked about it on stream, even like maybe we could help him out. Because I know, uh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this later. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll talk about it and figure it out. Yeah, DM, yeah, yeah. DMCA's are, are a, a nightmare. They're. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a monster to deal with. Mm -hmm. I think, um, let's take one last question. This is from Adam Schwagens. How is Classic going to affect your streams? I love comfy YouTube watching streams, so stay safe. Uh, but I will 100% of stream time be spent in game after launch. As hype design for Classic, who doesn't love relaxing? Yeah, I think, uh, I'll, I'll start on this one because this, this was kind of on the tip of my tongue earlier. Um, the content is going to be especially now all of us have kind of dipped our toes into doing more IRL, more variety, more this, more that, um, you know, Stacey and I have been doing IRL. I think that with classic, wow, you can't really stream everything that you do in classic, especially if you're a guild leader. Like I said, I spent like, like eight, nine, 10 hours one day with JD, like, like help him get all set up to, to gear him up to eventually end up being the guy, uh, in case it needed to happen. And it did. Right. And he ended up being a really good player for us. And, um, like, I, I might not be able to stream all of that in Classic, right? Just because then you want to get, like, stream sniped and ganked and all that stuff like that. I think uh, you're st – I'm sure we're still going to have streams where we're, like, watching YouTube videos where we're just having a good time relaxing, just chatting. I know if we're if we're ranking – Stay Safe and I have both talked about this uh, – like, possibly ranking together. I, I don't know if I want to rank or Gen 1 rank. Stay Safe says he wants to rank or Gen 1 rank, right? That's true, um, yeah. So like we're, this is something that we're we're kind of talking about doing. Maybe like we'll rank together, and then he'll stream for the first half, and then I'll stream the second half, and uh, we'll just I mean, we'll basically be on each other's streams, and we'll just be talking about stuff or my break, and like watch videos, like if we're like anchoring one game or this and that, because there's all kinds of stuff that goes into it. Uh, I personally think that I, I'm still gonna bring like a uh, a fairly wide variety of content to what I do. We have like nice, like, you know, comfy streams where we're watching videos and doing stuff like that. But then we'll also have streams where it's like, boom, something's happening. Like we're going Paladin Police Force. We're cleaning up Searing Gorge. Like we're, we're still going to be doing that kind of stuff. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. And uh, I'll also be doing variety in IRL and stay safe. I'm sure you're, you're the same way. Um, because we're stay safe and I are more similar in in terms of what we do than uh like tips tips doesn't do like the IRL and stuff like that. But stay safe. Do you want to go ahead and piggyback off of that? Yeah, I mean, like I'm gonna be honest. Ninety, probably more than that. Ninety plus percent of my content once classic is out, um, is just gonna be playing classic WoW. Like as much as I, of of course there are things you can't really stream with classic WoW, but right. as much as I can stream, I will stream everything that I possibly can. Um. Mm -hmm. There's going to be days where I'm just, you know, if not, if not much is going on, we'll all be kind of burned out. I'm sure we'll watch YouTube videos and chill and hang mm -hmm. out, do an IRL stream, whatever, go downtown. But uh, that's that's what I want to do. I just I just want to stream Classic Well. <laughs> yeah. Tips, that's what about you? Dude, when Classic comes out, I am not moving from this chair. Like, my, my biggest goal for Classic is that the leather on this chair bonds on a molecular level to my butt cheeks. If, if I do yeah. not achieve that, then I have failed all of you. Dude, so, let me give uh, you a tip, dude. Just put on a few pounds because uh, it's easy for me. <laughs> 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 I've had that no problem. It's been like that for years. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and yet this ends. You said, I mean, you, you, uh, you know, you, you might be working or whether you're working or streaming full time. I mean, it's, it's, it's all like, you know, up, up in there for you. You just know that you do plan on at least streaming a little bit, whether you're working somewhere else or maybe even like, you know, applying for a different job at Blizzard or something like that. So yep. is that right? I'll be, uh, hopefully I'll be in a position where I can get time off for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, I'm at, if I'm at Blizzard, that might be a little bit harder to do. Right. right. Company, hey, I'll figure that I out. got sick, guys. Sorry. Uh, it just I, so happens to be when Classic came out. I couldn't get time off for, for any of our launches at all. Like, I tried. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, I mean, I worked like, what, like 13, 14 hours on like the BFA launch day, and I could not, I couldn't get time off. I was trying to level up my chair, but it, my desk, but it, it's so hard yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but yeah, for yeah. sure yeah i will definitely be i will definitely be playing and streaming of course all right all right guys well, hey, uh I, oh, go ahead and say safe. i was just gonna say yeah this is thanks for coming on man it was good to oh have yeah you on, dude it's been a long time coming it's a long, yeah. long time coming yeah. yeah we've talked about this for months it just uh, hasn't really been able to happen until uh you know like i said earlier uh i don't know if i even said this today or whenever we talked about it before but um sometimes like an unfortunate circumstance or unfortunate events leads to to really good things so uh i, I know we all hope for the best for you i mean you you've been a great uh not just like a, a resource you know connecting you know the classic community to uh blizzard but also like uh, just just a great friend you know uh, i mean you, you've done a lot for all of us and um even if we again <laughs> had to meet in a not not very good situation <laughs> but yeah. you've been a really good friend and and uh everything you've done really means a lot to not just us but a whole lot of people Thanks, so man. thank you for coming on man it's weird to think a dmca led to me being me you know having three new friends <laughs> yeah. i would know i would know e you know, either tip or stay safe if it wasn't for originally originally meeting you. Well, yeah, hey, we, we didn't even talk about this today, but when we were down there at BlizzCon, it was really it was it was really cool. Uh, so Yethisens gave us a, a tour of the Blizzard HQ, and he like it was mm -hmm. like it was so obvious to tell you were very passionate about everything. Like it was it was really badass. I can't imagine anyone anyone that could have given us a better tour. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks, for, thanks sure. for that again. Mm -hmm. It was it was fun. It was awesome having you guys out. Like I I I was looking forward to you guys coming down the, like the entire time leading up. Like whenever I was approving your your BlizzCon passes, I was like, I'm gonna give them a tour. <laughs> like yes. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. For anyone who saw the pictures of them at the campus, what you don't see is I was the one taking the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> photo cred. Photo cred. Yeah. Photo, photo yeah. Cred. For sure. Uh, so anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us for Classic Cast. Again, please follow Sakar. Please follow Stay Safe TV. Please follow Tips Out Baby. Follow their YouTube channels or, or sub to their YouTube channels. Follow their Twitch channels. Follow them on Twitter. Um, we really appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate all the support. And uh, I'm actually going to host Stay Safe today. Stay Safe's going to stream. And uh, I'll end the Classic Cast. I, I want to thank some people who, who resubbed and whatnot. And... Uh, I'll go ahead and host Stay Safe. If you guys want to go ahead and head over there, if you guys want your shout out for for resubbing, then yeah. uh, you guys can hang out here, uh, and then I'll and I'll just host him here in a, in a minute or two. So, again, thank I you guys will, so much. I will dip and just go live now. Take care, everyone. I'll see you guys soon. Do it. Later, Bye, everybody. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys later. Peace.